Welcome, everybody, to another live episode of the Outlaw Nation channel here on the Outlaw Nation channel. I'm excited. It's December 1st. I got the decorations up. I'm ready to go for Christmas. I went for a more foresty oh, foresty look. You know, you got a little Santa with the uh, red and black going on, a little happy holidays. In order, you know, we want to stay on the side of it being, you know, it's being positive about everybody. Uh, Merry Christmas for me. Got a, I got a tree back here as well. Can you see that tree? Let me turn the... Look at a tray. Look at a tray. What a tray. Oh, my God. Look at a tray. There's a little lights that go up. Got a little J on here. That's pretty cool. So awesome. And shout out to my lovely lady who uh, who built that tree, for God's sakes. I got a little uh, stocking hung up here by the, my by book by bookcase with care. Uh, I got some uh, you know winter cones going on, winter trees going on. I'm fully in the mood for Christmas. I know. Listen, 2020 has been a tough, tough year. Uh, but uh, Christmas is here. It's a time to reconnect with people, reconnect with that spirit of humanity uh, and find the positive things that are going on in our world. It's also a very tough time for a lot of people. Lord knows, I think when I had my stuff that I went through in 2016, it was during right the tail end of November or middle of November into the Christmas season, one of the toughest months I've ever had in my life. Uh, so I know it's tough as well. And one of the things I want to do is be a place for people to come and hang out and be positive and be uh, just be receptive to uh, to the good things that can happen in the world and fill it with guests who bring us joy and happiness and fun. And I couldn't have picked a better guest to start December with than the lady who is coming up uh, to be our guest here on the show tonight. She is one half of the movie couple. She is a content creator, a pundit, a critic, a kick-ass woman doing all kinds of stunt works, and she's a fashion maven with all her geeky stuff that she does over there, wearing all that stuff. You follow her on Instagram. Uh, you've seen all the great outfits that she wears. She's incredible. And also, I have grown to respect and love her as a friend uh, and as a person in my life who I've sought counsel from, who I've sought many, uh, you know, who has navigated me through some tough moments at a place we both used to work. Uh, we loved having coffee together. We loved walking and getting lunch together. I always enjoyed every conversation I had with this woman. And also, she took no guff, ladies and gentlemen. No guff. She wasn't having the outlaw's BS when he was crossing the line. And I was appreciated that. Always made me respect her like crazy. So without further ado, you guys are in for a treat tonight. We haven't talked in a bit. So we're catching up tonight, hanging out and talking about so many things. Uh, get ready, ladies and gentlemen, as I bring on to the show the lovely and talented Wendy Lee Zaney. How are you, Wendy? Hey, Roca, I'm so good. Wow, that was a, what an intro that I am not <laughs> worthy of. <laughs> you are totally worthy of that intro. You've been a really uh, awesome part of uh, of my life, and it's been great to have you as a friend and uh, for us to get together and get to know each other. And, you know, you've opened doors for me uh, that I appreciated very much, and you've counseled me in moments when I've needed it, when things have gotten hairy. Um, and also, aside from that, as I said, you just you've built things from scratch. You've fought, you've clawed, you've scratched, and you've shown people what you can do in this business. And I've always appreciated that about you. Thank you so much. Um, I honestly enjoyed the the time that we worked together so so much. Uh, most prominently, I do remember our getting coffee and our walk <laughs> to Panera. Yeah. I miss those the most because when it's like, oh, it's lunchtime, let's go. Usually that's 3 p.m. for us. <laughs> we're like, oh, we haven't eaten all day. No wonder we're a little hangry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, those days could be hairy because we had so much to do, different shows. You were scheduling things. You were on things. You were in meetings. Like there was so much uh, you were handling there. Uh, oh, and then you were going home to shoot your stuff or you were taking the weekend and shooting your trailer reactions and reviews and everything with Dustin that you do over there on the movie couple to build up you're a following and look, your following's gotten to the point, Wendy, where you're getting stuff to promote. You're getting invited to things and it's great to see how you've built it with hard work and belief and determination uh, into what it is. Thank you so much. I am so grateful. I'm grateful that, um, that I have a really good support system here at home with Dustin, who mm -hmm. basically I'm like, I really want to make a video. And he'll just say, okay, I ask him, he, like, he spoils me a lot. Like I'll say, <laughs> 
you know, especially during the pandemic, uh, if I have self tapes, we were talking about this earlier and I, it's yeah. a partner read, then I'm like, can you read this for me? <laughs> and then like, you know, it's a self tape, depending on how many pages I get, you know, two hours later, can right. we do it one more time? And he'll say, okay. <laughs> and we'll do it one more time <laughs> before I send that, it over to casting. That's the role of being the uh, the uh, you know the uh, the second half of of an actor of an acting couple is you got to be there to read lines. Lord knows, Lindley's done the same thing for me for some of these hosting auditions I've been on. She's had to read the uh, the lines. She's like, "What am I doing?" And I just please just stand there for ten minutes and just let's do it four or five times, and I'll <laughs> edit in the best takes. <laughs> just be my eye line. Just be my eye line. Yeah. Just don't move. <laughs> just don't, don't move. move. <laughs> well, I mean, Wendy, how has your uh, year been as we go into December? How have you found yourself kind of transitioning into the things that you're doing? And, you know, there's there's now more time for you to really work on the movie couple. How have you filled the time over the last few months? And I know we're in a COVID situation. How has that been as well for you? Kind of you're figuring all this out and and, and what you're doing with your career. I mean, literally this year has been a complete dumpster fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not seen any of my friends in person. I've seen them like this in little yeah. you know, boxes, which I'll take it if this is what I can get, and then I'll take it. Right. Um, you know, kind of, I no, I no longer work where I work, where I used to work. So mm -hmm. um, when it became official in August, where I was kind of like, okay, there's no, you know, there was kind of a glimmer of hope when I was on furlough, where I was like, well, maybe we can get past the yeah. pandemic and things can resume and we really don't know because like every single day every you know we hear something a little bit different and like yeah. LA we're kind of on like a stay at home again which I'm yeah. like I, that's I've been doing that since March cool cool cool, cool. Yeah. I haven't gone anywhere um so when August rolled around I kind of just went well I am thankful that I've had the period from March until August mm. to kind of you know, um, dedicate some more time yeah. to the movie couple and to do, um, have more availability to do some hosting gigs on the side, mm -hmm. to do some more self tapes, which is always nice. So, um, we really found a stride with like our live streams. We do that every Wednesday and Saturday mm. at 2 p.m. PT on our channel. Okay. And we created our own little community. We call them the movie bunch and they're awesome. A couple of them are here <laughs> today. I see That's Vanda awesome. and MK and Stardew. So like, so nice to see nice. Um, everybody kind of, and we, and we love that. That's one of the things that we do on our channel that I didn't think I would love at all because mm -hmm. with live stream, I don't know why I was nervous about it. I like, it's not like I haven't done it before. Right, right, right. But I think because I was, you know, having there's no engineer, it's just me and Dustin. Yeah. You know, we didn't we didn't have Ruba Kaba and, and Cody Hall <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and Adam Smith, you know. So um I I was like a little nervous and I was like, well, you know, let's just try it. And if it if it sucks, then it sucks and I'll fix it. And how am I gonna learn if I just don't do it? Right. So I right. did it. Yeah. I did it and now it's a thing that we do um twice a week and it's so much fun. And I've I'm seeing our viewership climb on the channel, which is something I've really wanted. Yeah. And you know, it's that's been like the the biggest uh the the funnest part of, of the pandemic to kind of discover that. On the yeah. flip side, yeah, on talking side. about a little bit of negative negative stuff <laughs> that came from the pandemic and being laid off. Mm. I don't know if this has happened to you. Mm. It's been happening to me. Every time I post something new to my Instagram, I'm yeah. like dropping followers. Oh, yeah. They just they just go and I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, if you don't like what I'm posting, <laughs> I guess I guess there's no no need. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's yeah. natural. There's no there's no need for them to stay, but a part of me wonder how much of it was from because of of where I worked and who was it I was associated quote unquote right. associated with right. you know which by the way I'm still friends with everybody there it's, it's yeah like, it's just because you don't work somewhere doesn't mean you're like oh sorry you're not friends anymore yeah it exactly. doesn't work like that yeah. <laughs> at least not for me right. but uh, I just I I found I found that kind of interesting I'm like hmm, okay okay. Yeah, it's been it's I I have found that as well. It's been weird. I, uh, like you, the the Outlaw Nation viewership slowly every month growing and growing. It isn't growing at the leaps and bounds of where we initially started, but piece by piece, step by step, as people trust the content more, see the consistency of the work we do here, uh, we're getting more and more people on board. You know, we're almost at fifteen thousand, which for me is I would like to be at twenty, but fifteen is a good kind of you know you know me, Wendy. I like to jump. I don't like to just take a step by step. I like to jump already be somewhere and be farther ahead but it takes time and you have to learn what works for you and what doesn't when i first started out i was doing so many daily shows that i yeah. was burning myself out and eventually realized 
I could get just as much viewership from doing a weekly show every day, different show every day, one time a day or twice a day, uh, than I would doing three shows a day consistently every day that are the same show, you know? And so when I realized that and you figure it out and you start to realize what things you should review, what things you shouldn't review, it's all trial and error. So I'm trying to jump 10, five years ahead to where you're at in my first few months of doing a channel. So it's just like, it's a learning curve and you have to be patient with yourself and understand what content people like to see from you, what content they don't. Uh, but I've been like you, I've had to figure it out. And then I've been proud of the fact that the show, that the channel reflects who I am. Politics, geek stuff, sports. This is yep. what it's all about. Uh, and it may not grow as quickly as if it was focused on one thing only, but I like that it's me and growing from there. And that's what I've had to learn to embrace as well. Have there been things that you've done with trial and error that you've been surprised have been positives for your oh. channel? Mm, uh, the live stream is definitely a positive. Okay. Um, and that's really, really great. Still learning how to do that. Um, being on Twitch is also a change. Oh yeah. That's I can learn new. to do that next. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh find somebody that can, that can help you because yeah. uh, I found Justin who was able to help me. Um, and he's mm. a movie bunch and just, I'm just so grateful because YouTube, I understand I've been doing it for a while. So yeah. like making graphic hashtags and whatever ads and all that stuff. Like I get it with yeah. Twitch is it's very different because it's a different kind of interaction and live stream. In my opinion, right. some people may, may say it's the same, but I feel like with YouTube, I kind of fall in easier because the, the, the subscribers are there, you know, the base is there because they, they follow the channel thankfully for so long that um, they'll come in and stop by a live stream, even if it's just for five, 10 minutes and yeah. with Twitch, you got to just, when you're starting out on a blank slate, uh, just don't look at who is viewing you because they don't always <laughs> pop up and it doesn't always ref reflect correctly. Yeah. So it feels like you're talking to nobody <laughs> <laughs> for a little bit. And you yeah. just, I mean, I can talk to anyone or anything. So it, it, it's not a problem for me. I just sit there and chit chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, another true. thing that I realized, because I, I, I wonder how much, people still watch reaction videos. We put them oh, yeah. up because we enjoy making them. Right, That's right. really the whole the whole thing. It's 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 we love seeing them and then we have people who want to see them that kind of will comment and say, can you do this? Or they'll come right. to our Discord and say, can you do this? And we're like, okay, sure. Um, we will we'll pick if there's like, you know, a, a movie that we're not very enthusiastic about, then we mm -hmm. just won't do it because I don't want to spend my time trashing a movie where somebody right. was looking forward to seeing somebody's reaction yeah. of seeing a movie, but then they're going to be let down because like we didn't like it, which obviously doesn't mean they shouldn't like the movie, right. Right. but it's a little, a little disheartening where if I say like, oh, I love X, Y, Z. And then they're like, well, I hate it. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Uh, right. And then I'm trying to think, Oh, we started to do the uh, reactions to the Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's something that I was not going to do. I was so sad in the beginning, like yeah. two episodes. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing it. Editing is a, can I cuss on this? Yeah, of course. Please. Okay. I was like, ed editing is like a bitch. I didn't want to do it. And I knew mm -hmm. I was going to spend seven, eight hours, like a whole day doing it. And I Dude, didn't want to do yeah. it. Ugh. And I ended up trying it out for episode three, not mm -hmm. knowing what was coming in episode three. Right. And it was a really good one to start. And then now, you know, I've like op opened the floodgate. So now, <laughs> now we're going to keep doing it. But I think I started to find the rhythm for editing and, yeah. and the way we want to do it because episode three took me like four hours to get up. Episode yeah. four took me like six hours to get up uh, where I was like, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm not doing this. Um, yeah. And then episode five it took me like just it rendered. It went up, didn't get blocked. I was like, all right. <laughs> You're good to go. I understand what I have to do now. Got it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Wendy, can I ask you to move your hair off the mic? It's scratching onto the mic as you're talking. So there we go. All yeah. right, awesome. Uh, but yeah, you I mean, I beautiful cover girl. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, please. Uh, and we'll take this moment here to let it to remind everybody uh, if you want to send in a question on the Streamlabs and Super Chats, please do so. Those are the things that support the Outlaw Nation, support what we're doing here, and encourage people like Wendy to come on to the show and be a guest and hang out with you all for a couple of hours. The Streamlabs address is right above Wendy's head there, streamlabs.com slash John Roca says. And of course, you know, you guys know what to do with Super Chats. Uh, let's get to a couple of those now. Lewis Cox says, Hey, Roca, love what you do. Oh, man, the new episode of Mando blew my mind. We're definitely going to talk about that in just a second. Lewis, hold on. 
Uh, uh, hey, one fix is impulse. Good to see you, man. He says, Hey, John, miss you, bro. Hope you are well. Hope you are well. And I hope your friend is navigating this COVID situation as well. 156. I heard that your friend uh, got it. You told us that your friend got it. So I'm, uh, you know, sending best prayer, sending prayers and thoughts to him as he navigates this situation and his family as well. So thinking of you, brother, for sure. So please send in your stream lab, send in your super chats. Look, Wendy Lee is here for, uh, you know, another hour and 45 minutes. Anything you want to ask Wendy's opinion on, anything you want to hear from her, we're going to get into some stuff as well. So please send it in and keep supporting uh, the show uh, and what we do here. And let me see. Remember, hey, there's Sean, my producer there, Sean Barito. Remember, everyone, if you want to ask the outlaw or Wendy a question, send them in through Streamlabs. And there's the address there. And I'll probably put a ticker down below as well because I'm a glutton for punishment. Wendy, let's uh, let's let's go into this question that uh, Lewis Cox uh, brought up. You know, I put it in the thumbnail. I mentioned it in the uh, in the pitch of this show for people to come watch. Ahsoka Tano, she is officially live action through Rosario Dawson and of course Filoni uh, oh, and Favreau on the Mandalorian of this season too. But Wendy, I also know that you have a very strong relationship with Ashley Eckstein and you have worn her clothes. You have walked to the uh, Comic-Con uh, catwalk uh, for her universe. Uh, and so this must be a, a kind of an interesting line to walk for yourself, uh, seeing the live action, but not having it be Ashley. What was your reaction to all of this as it was going on? And then what was your reaction to seeing Rosario and Ahsoka Tano going live action? So with with Ahsoka, she is hands down my favorite character in the Star Wars universe, mm -hmm. right next to Leia and then Luke. And then right. we can have we can build the list from there. Um, <laughs> but it's it's interesting with Ahsoka. I didn't like her in her appearance in the Clone Wars movie. Ah, okay. I in fact hated her. Okay. I thought, ugh, Anakin shouldn't have a, a, a Padawan, he an apprentice or whatever. Like he's never talked about it. Vader has never talked about anything like this. Mm. How are they, how are they going to, you know, like add her into the universe and then take her out later? Cause she's right. never mentioned again. So how, how is that going to work? And that was like years ago. It's like 12, over 12 years ago mm -hmm. when I, when I saw the movie. And then obviously we know that Ahsoka also crossed over into the Clone Wars um, animated series, which I love. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, and I was like, Oh, well maybe they'll like tell her story and then maybe she'll like, I don't know, the writer out like a season three or something like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. And boy, am I glad it didn't happen because with Ahsoka, she was somebody that it was nice to watch her journey throughout Star Wars, through her relationship with herself mm -hmm. and Anakin. And I grew to love who, the person she has become, strong, graceful, asking too many questions, but important <laughs> questions. Mm. Um, you know, she challenged the Jedi Council with, with a lot of her questions, with the way that they did things. And one of the most powerful episodes, aside from the last episode of Clone Wars season mm. seven, when she, you know, left her lightsabers, was probably yeah. when she took her Padawan braids and when Anakin said, will you come back? And she put them in her hand and she walks out, fades mm -hmm. to black, and in silent, and I was, and I bawled. I was like, "Oh my god, she's so cool!" <laughs> you know, she's like, she's like, "I'm no Jedi." I, I, I left. So, yeah, you know, I follow Ahsoka's journey from Clone Wars to now Rebels, and when I first heard that it was rumored because they wouldn't confirm it, right? It was rumored, but they weren't denying it. And I was like, "It's probably mm -hmm. true," because they would have just denied it. But anyways, it, it didn't matter because it was going to come out one way or another. So I was like, "We'll just be patient and we'll wait and we'll see who's yeah. right and who's wrong." Uh. I was disappointed initially that it wasn't Ashley. The, you know, she voiced the character for over 12 years. She literally yeah. brought the character to life and we've we've grown with her mm -hmm. as well as she has grown with the character. And I feel like aside from Filoni, no one else knows Ahsoka as yeah. well. Yeah. Like, and to me, Ashley Eckstein, she embodies who Ahsoka is. Like there's mm -hmm. so much of her that reminds me of, of who Ahsoka is like a really, really good person, yeah. always positive, always sees the positive in things, always very generous, always like she, and this is really hard to find in people. She listens. Yeah. She listens. And that's, that's special. And I know it sounds like, Oh, everybody should listen. Like you in this industry, you have no idea. Like people, yeah, people right. you think they're listening, but they're really not. They don't even nope. know your name. Yep. You know, so <laughs> I've <true>. always been, <laughs> so I've been always very gracious to Ashley for, just being 
always very kind yeah and very very generous like um you know obviously we're not like bfs by any means but right, right. whenever whenever i would get to see her at events and stuff like that she it's not just like oh another fan it's like oh, hey wendy like she makes the point to remember names mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's important i remember the first time i went up to her and i was like hey like i'm a big fan and so and so and then it right. just kind of bloomed from there and um I, i'll never forget she actually came by our our work and uh mm. she was like hey are you going to comic-con this year did you still want to walk in her universe fashion show i'm like yes because i asked her about it before and then i right. had emailed to certain people unfortunately they had filled their slots so i couldn't do it and it was not a big deal but she still made sure um that i was able to attend the show right, and right. like have some good opportunities to cover for a geek and glitter uh so that was really nice and the fact that she was like she remembered yeah and she was like do you want to and i'm like well of course she was like okay we'll make it happen and, it, and yeah. then it happened so i'm forever grateful for the, for that experience uh always so um you know because of that i and and just not just like my admiration for her and the fact that she is the character to me i was disappointed that it wasn't going to be her mm -hmm. and then i had to kind of separate myself and take a step back at casting choices and kind right. of look at where ahsoka is at this point in time when we meet her in the mandalorian so she's yeah. about like give or take 40s 46 is what they're estimating but yes mm -hmm. 40s absolutely yeah more or less right so yeah. she's obviously grown and ahsoka's mm -hmm. stature and um her looks she's got a very defined uh bone structure high yeah. cheekbones um i don't want to say gaunt because it's not that but prominent uh facial features mm -hmm. and she's certainly tall yeah um and and so i think when they looked at that they looked at um actresses that would resemble who was so what ahsoka would look like at that age, at that age yeah uh, and in time and and obviously talent not to say ashley doesn't have talent she is an actress like people think she's right. just a vo actress she's not she's done many many on-screen stuff prior right. Right. to to landing ahsoka so um it, it was disappointing and i had to i wanted to still enjoy you know ahsoka being brought into mm -hmm. live action so mm -hmm. i made a point to kind of separate like you know what if i ultimately end up not liking the episode i'm still going to have clone wars and i'm still going to have rebels no right. matter what and that's the origin and i made peace with it and then I watched and then I watched it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I, I think the thing that's been incredible about the Ahsoka character, you know, uh, I can make a connection and I and I, I go along with me, people go along. It's like professional wrestling in this way. Sometimes the character is introduced and they kind of fumble how the character is introduced and they don't like this person. The fans turn on this person. But eventually, if you make some adjustments and have that character stick around, stick around. Eventually, the fans come around. What they did, and I don't know if it was intentional of Filoni's uh, 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 efforts or not, but like they started out, a lot of people did not like her as a character. They felt that she was forced into the narrative. And you know, like you said, Wendy, they didn't understand, like, how is it going to work when they've never mentioned her before? How is it possible? And they, through 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 writing, through really looking at this thing, figuring out how to weave her into these stories and make it work. And by the time we get to Rosario Dawson in, uh, you know, playing the character now live action, this is not um the young ahsoka tano anymore this isn't even even the ahsoka tano we saw uh at the end of clone wars the series uh, that season seven this is a more capable a more mature a more relaxed a more confident ahsoka that has been through some shit and has seen some stuff so when she walks up to uh to of course the goddaughter of uh, of Bruce Lee, that actress there, Diana Lee in Asanto, when she walks up to her, you can sense the confidence, the relaxed inevitability of what's going to happen because she's been there many times. Rosario really instills that in the Ahsoka Tano character so much, and then then fighting the Mandalorian, then having the conversations, the unspoken conversations with Grogu, aka Baby, Baby Yoda, aka the child. All of that is done really well by an actress who has also been through the wars of her career, of her life, has taken some hits over the last few months with these accusations. 18 of those 20 accusations have been stripped away uh, and have been uh, have been uh, taken down by the person who accused her of these things. So it's like she's had to have her own battles 
in this life and come out the other side. And that really comes through in the portrayal of her, of uh, Ahsoka Tano that Rosario Dawson does. And I'll tell you this, Wendy's my honest feeling. It's maybe one of the best acting performances I've ever seen Rosario do. Very laid back, very confident, very in control, and not needing to overdo a situation. She's just, uh, she just really owns it. She does own it, and uh, I was surprised that they mm. showed a, showed her right off the bat. I yeah. thought yeah. they were going to give us like last fifteen minutes. Like Ahsoka comes in, she does some cool lightsaber stuff. They talk and they have a conversation about about Baby Yoda, and then she's going to send him on another mission because right. she wouldn't. I just don't see her, at least in this season, having like staying with uh, Mando for the entirety of the season, right. which would be cool at this point. I, like I would love to see that, but um, I don't think that would be a thing that that would happen. So mm -hmm. I was pleasantly surprised to know that she was basically in almost the full 46 minutes. It was, yeah. this was essentially, it felt like the least Mandalorian to me. I agree. It felt like, and it, I'm okay it, with it. It felt like the Ahsoka Tano show guest starring the Mandalorian and uh, Groku. That's what it felt like to me, Wendy, which I didn't mind. I absolutely did not mind because yeah. she really owned the time that she had on screen. And you're right. Filoni swerving wherever or zigging wherever everyone thought he was going to be zagging by putting her right front and center from the beginning and putting her in a majority of the scenes and then giving her a kick ass battle scene at, or fight scene at the end uh, with once again the goddaughter of Bruce Lee, her, her dad, Dan and Asanto, a Filipino martial artist who trained under Bruce Lee, uh, all of that connective tissue of the, and I should ask this as well, I should, as I'm, as I'm saying this occurs to me, Wendy, there are a lot of Asian flavors to this episode. What was that like for you to watch that in star Wars here? When we talk about representation and we talk about this character of Ahsoka Tano and having this Asian influence Kurosawa and what have you throughout this episode. I, I love it. And I feel like maybe in one of the gallery episodes on Disney Plus that Filoni and Favreau have talked about their influences. Mm. But I love seeing, you know, for the most part, I feel like Mando is is kind of that Western inspired. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for this one, they made it kind of almost like Lone Samurai. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of uh, inspirations, for example, when the two of them face off. Mm -hmm. And she was like taking the little pin off of her cloak, and then so yeah. like, and it, oh, sorry, my mic. And then it yeah. falls. I was like, this is so samurai right now. Another yeah. thing that she did, you know, that giant space gong that they hit to oh, alert yeah. the village, and then she went and she did the double slash. As you right. see the gong fall apart, she kind of yeah. stays in that, and then she does that whip, uh, mm -hmm. where she kind of, you know, it, it, kind of equivalent to a samurai kind of taking the blood on the blade and kind of like throwing it off their blade when they. When they do that move, I was just like, oh my God, it's it's so cool. And even the garden with the bonsai and the pond and everything looked very samurai and Japanese inspired mm -hmm. to me, which I I really loved. I did, this was definitely like a, a lot of the scenes was very stylized and I enjoyed it so much. It, I mean, I think seeing Ahsoka in live action in this way was probably the best way to deliver it. And I think yeah. also kind of taking a step away from like what I want to see with Ahsoka because yeah, like I love the character, millions of people love the character, but there's also brand new Star Wars fans who have not seen Clone Wars or Rebels. Great point, yes. And they're meeting Ahsoka for the first time. This is a great way for like her entry into kind of their Star Wars journey. Yeah. And it's the best. I, I wouldn't have wanted any other, well, the only thing I would have wanted was probably more fighting. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just i'm never satisfied you know it's like oh yeah. can i have more can we have an hour and a half of this thank you yeah it's like the emperor said in the lego star wars holiday special less talky talky more fighting more fighting, fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah did it I, yeah. bother you i'm sorry go ahead yeah, no go ahead what's up did it bother you that mando never mentioned the m count I, I i actually brought this up and i think our review uh, or in a subsequent conversation about this on either scn live or one of my shows uh yeah i was surprised he didn't bring up the mk i was more surprised he didn't bring up the fact of what they were using his blood for what they were using uh the uh, grogu's blood for but maybe that's because this is not a connective story for ahsoka that ahsoka is this was maybe essentially a backdoor pilot for a live action star wars series on ahsoka tano with bo katan with baby sabine wren with ezra with whoever's involved in that story sabine. yeah maybe there's oh. something with that coming down the pike so they didn't want to connect her too much 
into the M count and the blood and all of this. Maybe that's not her story. I do think we haven't seen the last of her uh, in this season, uh, but uh, and certainly not the Mandalorian, but maybe not this season either. So I think maybe just having her be somebody who they call upon to have part to be part of this final fight with Moff Gideon. We shall see. Remember, Gideon said, uh, you know, he's uh, or uh, um, uh, what's Jim Carlos Pacino said that he's got a badass lightsaber fight this season so i don't know if it's going to be with ahsoka some people have countered it said no that beskar spear it's going to be mando with the beskar spear against him uh, we shall see i didn't even think about that but we shall see but yeah i that's think that's true. why they didn't mention it in my opinion but yes i agree with you i, I was surprised they didn't mention more of it, especially when he was going to hand him over to be trained by her why wouldn't you let her know about that for sure I was like, yeah, this is this is kind of important information. And granted, he, you know, from our our point of view, we know the significance of the lightsaber, what it means to yeah. both Catan. We know before Mando realized that Moff Gideon was alive, we knew that he was alive. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think for from us, kind of looking in, we're just like, don't you understand the significance of it? And then when <laughs> if you look at it from if you put yourself in, you know, Mando's helmet. Right. It's kind of like, well, he actually doesn't get it. You know, he's not right. he's not privy to any of that information. And we also don't know how much was kind of disclosed to the characters when the cameras weren't on them. So who knows what kind of conversation they had right, right. prior. But I would like wishful thinking season finale, all out lightsaber battle, dark saber battle. We yeah. get Moff Gideon. Ahsoka comes back for a for a quick little, you know, cameo appearance. Um, Bo, I would love to come back kind of flying in and reclaiming that dark saber. And mm. as like she flies away, we kind of pan back and we just see blue. Just blue. <laughs> just thrown. Would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What was that? What was your reaction? And by the way, this is the we're gonna get in, I guess now at this point we'll get into some spoiler stuff. So if you haven't seen this episode, uh maybe uh tune out for a few minutes and then come right back. But like were you surprised by that reveal, Wendy? I mean, Thrawn, for God's sakes, the Grand Admiral is now being talked about as being part of this uh, of this universe. Live action. A lot of people uh, want uh, Matt Mickelson's brother, who voiced him in the uh, in the Clone. War I'm sorry, in the Rebel series, to do him live action because that's one physical physical actor that looks very similar to Thrawn in terms of body shape, body type, and height. Yeah, he's got the cheekbones too. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Those cheekbones with a little, like, you know, like brush, airbrush uh, contour. It'll, it'll look perfect. I mean, I would love that because we saw um, what Katie Sackhoff was able to do with yeah. the tan. She obviously oh voiced God. the character. Um, we know her from, from like, what was like the first thing, Battlestar, right? Yeah, Battlestar. Um, yeah. So, so it's, it's like, I was so happy to see that. And I, I think that's why it disappointed me that. Ashley able wasn't able to to take a part in in this live action mm. uh, series, so we'll we'll see kind of how things how things play out. But like, yeah, man, with Thrawn, I looking back, the knee jerk reaction was yelling at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> was just like I didn't hear any of the lines said afterwards. I had to pause and go back because, <laughs> or should I say rewatch because we were filming the reaction. Right. But right. now, in like retrospect, we should have expected it a little bit more because of Ahsoka's connection from Rebels mm. with Thrawn and Ezra. Should have yeah. like seen it and that's why she kind of wanted to. I feel like kind of like Bo was asking about Moff Gideon and, and does he have it, this sort of a situation. Her asking was kind of, it's not really asking, it's just a confirmation to what she already knew. Yeah. That's what it, that's what it felt like. I mean, for mm. us, I was like, oh, what? I think for her, she's just she thinks, and and this is of course a theory, so I could yeah. be wrong, but she thinks you know it's probably Thrawn, but she's gonna get the confirmation from the person that has a direct connection with him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, well, let's jump into some more of these uh, Streamlabs super chats real quick, and we'll we'll uh, go back uh, to it. Uh, Steve Frederick uh, asks, "Hey, watching Klaus again? Top five for me." Have you seen? Uh, yes, I did, Steve. I saw it last year. I'm definitely going to revisit it again. For those of you who don't know, I'm doing 25 Days of Christmas here on the Outlaw Nation channel. Every day I'm going to be reviewing one Christmas movie, whether it be a classic, a modern classic, a TV special, a Hanukkah movie, whatever it is, a new new Christmas movie like Jingle Jangle or uh, oh, what's the new one with uh, Kristen Stewart that just came out as well. Uh, reviewing that one that's going to oh, be yeah. that's on Netflix. I'll be reviewing those. Happiest Season, that's the one. And so uh, those are the all oh, every day. I just shot my elf one. I'll be dropping it an hour after we finish this show. So that'll be the first one. Then tomorrow I'll be dropping it. So Klaus is definitely in the mix to be one of the ones I will be reviewing because I can't champion that film enough. Did you get a chance to see this animated film on Netflix oh. or a screening? 
It's so good. Yeah. I want to do another rewatch because when we watched it, we were with family and you know how like there's like shuffling and st- when you watch, you know, yeah, yeah. at home with a bunch of people, you kind of want to get up and they're not going to pause for you. They're just going to keep going. So yeah. I want to do another rewatch this year. Uh, but that's definitely like top five. Jingle Jangle is great. Yeah, I've heard. It's great so about it. much fun. Keegan-Michael Key, once you watch him in this, you're going to wish, Dustin, I say this all the time, like he should have been the genie. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah you, you'll see. You'll you'll see why. No shade on Will Smith. I think he did no. a great job. It's. I think it's a. That's it's a it's not an easy role to just kind of like get into. That's you yeah, know because you're yeah, following yeah. Robin Williams. But uh, I didn't know Keegan Michael Key to could do some of the stuff, and I was like, he could have been genie. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, all right, and thank you uh, for that uh, super chat there, Lewis Cox. Again, hope there might be a Wizard World series at some point in the future. Uh, what does that mean, Wizard World series? What do you mean, like a World series, like a World series of Wizards, like uh, Wizard World series? Yeah, Wizard World, like is wait, wiz- Wizards as in Harry Potter or Wizards like the sports team? <laughs> I don't know sports guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. Lewis, I don't say, pretend uh, to know sports. Clarify that, Lewis. You don't have to send in a new super chat. Clarify it in the <laughs> chat, and I'll I'll look for it. So let me know. Uh, I appreciate you doing that very very much, uh, Lewis. And uh, and then we got a, some uh, a couple of or oh, a few stream labs that have rolled in. Thank you all so much. You see the stream lab address above Wendy's head. Really appreciate you donating. You know everything you donate keeps the lights on here on the Outlaw Nation. Supports the things that we're doing. Puts the positive energy out into the world. Alan Smithy donated. Thank you, Alan. He said, hey, Roka and Wendy, I loved the new version of Ahsoka. This new phase in Ahsoka's story lives after all her mentors have passed on. Oh, great point. Yoda, Obi-Wan, and Anakin are all Force ghosts now. Ahsoka has grown beyond them. What do you want to see in her future? Yeah, Wendy, hadn't thought about that. You know, she mentions Yoda. She alludes to Anakin and what happened to him. Uh, so uh, and I think Kenobi is kind of uh, mentioned quickly. So what do you think about this? Uh, what her future might be? Cause she doesn't want to train the child. Someone wrote a great Twitter thread, uh, the other day talking about how Ahsoka, the reasons why she doesn't want to be a master and doesn't want to train this child because of how she was yanked out and trained and what she went through and the, the council turning their back on her and her having to walk away and walk her own path. Like, would she want to train anybody? So what do you think her future would be? Will she become a Jedi master or will she kind of just walk her own path and never train anybody? I think that's an interesting theory. I don't see her wanting to train anyone. I think okay. for Grogu, she kind of made a, a special uh, exception. I think maybe mm. because of her attachment to Master Yoda. Yeah that that she's kind of like oh and and the fact that she when she communicated with Grogu she said that he was you know already being trained at a mm-hmm. Jedi temple so she i can see her wanting to kind of help him hone in and come into his own with his power i don't see her doing that with any other force sensitive beings right um especially i, I don't know that's actually hmm because a part of me wants to say no because you know she's seen what happened with Anakin. Yeah, yeah. And we when we heard about you know her hesitation with that with Grogu and his attachment to uh, Din. Mm-hmm. But a part of me also she got very sad. Her facial expression yeah, and everything just right? kind of went down when she said there's not many of Jedi left. Yeah, like that's like so depressing to know that she was a part of the Jedi Order. Right, right. You know she grew up in that to. You know, now after Order 66, how many are left now? And that's, she probably, you know, is very cautious after having gone through that. She's got no friends, you know, yeah. like, you know, aside from from Rex and maybe Sabine that she talks mm-hmm. to every now and again. Like, and who and who knows at this point in Mandalorian, like who, who she's still in communication with. So mm-hmm. I can see her not wanting to take on the mantle of like, or like the title of a Jedi Master, even though, I feel like she have, you know, surpassed her own like kind of like skills, like yeah. where we see her now. She's so badass. Yeah. And then I kind of used what she was wearing in this episode of The Mandalorian mm. to um, one of her last scenes in Rebels where she's in the white. Yeah. I feel oh, like she's yeah. kind of graduating. I was like, oh, so we have, you know, kind of uh, in singular to to or parallel to L- Lord of the Rings. It's kind mm-hmm. of like, oh, Ahsoka the gray and Ahsoka the white. <laughs> so she just keeps graduating to like the next level. 
Yeah, and, you know, she's yeah. had that. She's and uh, it's a great uh, thing you bring up here because uh, she's moved past Smithy. She's moved past all her mentors. So what's next? I think what's next for her is to do what she's always been, which is to be a symbol of the great Jedi. She's essentially, in my opinion, like a great paladin in the universe of Star Wars in that she understands that sometimes you got to deal with situations a little bit harder than you need to. And you got to be still uh, uh, following essentially the Jedi code in how you handle, uh, uh, I don't know, situations that come up in, in your world, you know, and you saw the way she was willing to uh, jump in there and uh, kill uh, Diana Lina Santos' character um, uh, in order to get the information she needed and what she wants to get from Thrawn. And clearly, there's something really personal between her and Thrawn. So what does that mean? Does I mean, is the possibility down the road that Thrawn has killed Ezra? And so this <gasps> becomes a whole thing. Which I mean, because the way she asked, where is it? Like, there was such an anger to her. What is that all about? That's more than just, I need to find the guy. Like uh, like Bo-Katan, when she put that knife on Titus Welliver a couple episodes ago and said, tell me where the tell me where Moff Gideon is or tell me where he is. I want that Darksaber. Her obsessive anger about getting that Darksaber back because of what it symbolizes was there for everyone to see. So what is the Moff Gideon situation here? Would they, would they be gutsy enough to kill off Ezra Bridger and make that a part of why she wants revenge on Thrawn? I don't know. I don't know. There's something I, there, though. I would love and hate that at the same time. <laughs> I, I love it when shows get ballsy enough to kill off a character that, you know, yeah. that, that's pretty prominent. And and I think a lot of the times, like like TV in the U.S., they're they're afraid to kill off their, yeah. their main characters and things like that, where if you watch kind of like the foreign shows, they, 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 they kill oh, yeah. their, like a main character and like, you know, like they, they Game of Thrones it. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, you can't, I don't know who to root for now. Like, right. <laughs> you know, at first when you watch, you know, uh, Game of Thrones, you're like, yeah, right. Winterfell. <laughs> and then two episodes and you're like, oh no. <laughs> the <That> Starks. Happened? <laughs> oh, <Okay>. crap. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, I, I won't buy that Stark shirt. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, like, I don't that's, know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's so. a good point. Uh, C3P underscore Diddy said, uh, Roka, my man, I finally became a $10 patron. Oh, thanks, man. That's cool. Can't wait to annoy you with a bunch of movie questions. Question one, what was yours and the beautiful Wendy's best movie experience? Well, welcome aboard. Thank you so much, C3P underscore Diddy. And thank you for the question. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, we get those. It's a $10 patron. You get two hangouts. Tomorrow night, we get the hangout and then the hangout on Friday on camera. So come be a part of those as well. Uh, so, Wendy, do you have, what was your best movie experience ever? Can Do you have one? I have so many. I don't have one. Mm. Uh, the stereotypical answer is probably like Avengers Endgame when everybody came through the portal. Oh, yeah. Uh, but to not be stereotypical, it would be in 2019, was it? Mm. When I went to TIFF. Was okay. that when it was? And standing in line and I don't, I don't, I don't even remember what yet. Was it 2018 or was it 2019? I want to say it was 2019. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, last, last year. year? Okay. <laughs> last year. I don't even remember. I uh, just throw everything away. Everything is a dumpster fire. Throw it away. <laughs> uh, when I got to see Parasite. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, it had to be last year. Had to be last year. Yeah. yeah. Had to be last year. It was yeah. just a phenomenal experience because I remember going in, like, even if you're pressed, you have to, there's no like assigned seats and you still have to, if you want to get like a good seat, you still, they'll have sections out for you, but there's so many people yeah, that yeah. like, you want to make sure that you can get in. You want to make sure you have a good enough seat. Um, so like I stood in line for like an hour for that movie. Wow. It, wow. Yeah. I was just kind of like, I went, I went to one of the little convenience stores and I was like, these look good. I grabbed some snacks. I was eating in line. I was like, I don't, I don't care. This is what I'm, <laughs> This is what I'm here for. Like I had so much fun at TIFF and yeah. I'm bummed that it didn't get to really happen this year, but maybe next year, maybe next yeah. year. I was sitting down. I'm oh, um, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. no. You go, you go. No, no, no. And sitting down, did you go ahead? I was just going to cut off to go to another area. So please finish your story. Oh, okay. No, just sitting down, like, you know, kind of have my notebook at the ready. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take notes because I have to review this and I want to make sure I get everything down. I wrote Parasite. And that oh, was it. Wow. And I was just completely enthralled in the movie and just yeah, yeah. every every uh, reveal during the movie. I was just like, this is so freaking good. And then the next excitement was, I can't wait for everybody to see this. They're going to love it. 
<laughs> that's a, that's excellent. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I don't know if there's a great movie experience. I mean, I've had so many. Like you said, Wendy, it's difficult to to to, to nail. I, I, oh, this is terrible. I guess this is terrible. Look, there are bit. Look, let me say, I've seen many great movies, many classic movies. Seen them in the theaters, enjoyed them, revisiting them for the first time. Lawrence of Arabia in 4K was one of the most amazing experiences I ever experienced in a movie theater here in L or not here anymore, but in LA uh, that I'm two hours away now. Uh, <laughs> it's so weird to get used to that. And also um, what was the other one I saw that I really enjoyed that was on, Oh, seeing the 4k reissue of apocalypse now was a phenomenal experience Ooh. as well. But I do want to say this. I got to say this when I went to see greatest showman, uh a year ago or whatever it was ago and i was sitting in the theater at the screening on a sunday morning at 11 a.m <laughs> sitting in that 10 theater. A.m. it was yeah. actually 10 a.m and, oh, it it and, yeah, and i brought oh. greg, greg elba with me yeah <laughs> and we were yeah. like eating like movie theater pretzels I was like this I, is terrible it was breakfast. crazy at 10 a.m for amc yeah breakfast from amc brought to you by amc and i'm just sitting there but like when rebecca ferguson and of course it isn't rebecca ferguson who sings that part but when she sings never enough i had chills literal what people talk about the definition of chills down your spine i literally felt chills down my spine and knew that this movie had like connected with me on such a visceral level uh that i could not walk away from it ever uh and i think one last one i'll throw in is seven when i went to see seven in the 90s the first time and this is like this is john roca where he's like am i gonna become an actor am i gonna go to college am i gonna go back to college rather and study I saw seven and I knew how somehow, some way I had to be involved in, in the entertainment business. That movie affected me on so many levels, knowing what a movie can do. What Fincher did with that film uh, was just to me still ast astronomically insane for the time. You know, even the genius of rolling the credits backwards, all of that just kind of the way he etched the days into the screen all of these things he was able to do for me just blew away, plus the performances. So I remember just walking out of theater going, somehow, some way, I have to be involved with entertainment. So those are the movie experiences that really kind of stick out as we talk about it. Amazing. Um, <laughs> all right, Roger, Roger, 5171. Thank you, Roger, Roger. He says, so good to see Wendy Lee Zaney. I thought Rosario Dawson was amazing as a Sokotano. I was very impressed with her attention to detail. Rosario was able to follow many of Ahsoka's mannerisms, such as the way she crosses her arms. Thanks, John and Wendy. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, Roger, Roger, great reference. Uh, Wendy, what did you think about this? Did you sense that Rosario had really done her homework with the mannerisms and the movements? You know, some people criticized that the fighting style wasn't 100% accurate but of course, this is an older Ahsoka, so maybe those things have changed. But overall, did you feel that she got the mannerisms down correct? Oh, yeah. I There was a lot of it. So the the only it's like tiny issue that I had was the mm. voice match. Mm. Uh, and and I, would, I would never ask any actor to, while they're doing a performance, to try to also remember to match a character and we also have to like and i know like some somebody in my comments on on the youtube on my youtube channel was like you're too mm. nitpicky and i was like well sure but if you understood <laughs> this what this character meant to me and the fact that i watched her for for you know so many years and being yeah. voiced by one singular person you can get that it's a bit of a shock to hear mm -hmm. you know a, a different sound i will say her first line her very first line in the show matched really, really well. But then, yeah. and she tried the she tried to match the way Ahsoka spoke, mm -hmm. yes, um, and her the, her the rhythm, rhythm, yes. yes. Um, and I think for any actor out there um, taking on a role, and if you're kind of playing a character that's already existed in like a source material, whether it's a comic book character or yeah. you know a Clone Wars character, you would do your research. I have no doubt that she watched. All the Ahsoka Tano episodes, she watched the movie and she watched the Rebels. And I'm sure there were tons of notes and discussions between her and Filoni to how Ahsoka will move, how she's going to move her head. There yeah. was, um, it was after she kind of like cleared the wall and she was about to infiltrate the village in the final, mm. in the third act. Yeah. And she had used the force and to pull the rifle and then to hit the other guy in the face. Yeah. And she turns around and she does that side, that kind of like sideways smirk, just mm -hmm. one side of her face up. <laughs> Ahsoka does that a lot in her, um, especially kind of like a huh, gotcha. Yeah. That that's what she does. And I saw that. I was like, yeah, that's Ahsoka. So I I I know that with Rosario, you know, and with her like 
like filmography, if you want to call that her, her mm -hmm. credits, you know that she would have done her research. Yeah. There, yeah. there is no way. Um, I wasn't, I would have really loved to see more like agility mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that in, in the lightsaber fights, a lot more like, you know, flips and stuff like that. However, I was thinking because, you know, that's the nice study, um, yeah stunts and, and sword right. fighting right. i have the ahsoka lightsabers from galaxy's edge oh wow. i don't feel okay. like should i go get them no it's okay. <laughs> uh, i was like should i go get them um they're 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 large yeah they're large and i know that the stunt ones you know the picture perfect one the picture ones versus the ones for consumers are even though may look the same they're going to feel different like yeah. i'm sure hers were much lighter than the ones that i have yeah. but the the way the hilts are they're so long that people wanted to see more reverse grip because mm -hmm. that's some that's a signature ahsoka move right. and we got a little bit of it and i wanted to see more but i played with those lightsabers is not easy yeah it's not easy to flip them because of the weight i don't know how heavy those are in the episode we'll find out when they put it on gallery mm -hmm. but you know combined with that and the costume and the headdress her mantras yeah i think they kept it still looking really really good nice clean fight mm -hmm. um you know in the style that ahsoka would fight in but safely able to do for both the actor and the stunt people yeah yeah that's a great point actually when it's a fantastic point uh real quick we got 186 of you all watching us live thank you so much for joining us uh, but only 105 likes so let's get to 150 likes if you haven't hit that thumbs up button yet swing that mouse button over hit that thumbs up keep sending us stream labs as well as you see the address above wendy's head let's get to a good number send in you know it's christmas for god's sakes send in some money to support the outlaw nation and everything we're doing here for sure We've got some more of these to get to real quick. Uh, Jim Sandlin said, Wendy, I watched your first Vlogmas episode. So what are you and Dustin planning for upcoming shows? Also, love the Mando reaction videos. Outlaw, I also love watching your Mando reviews too. Hashtag Baba Booey. Thank you, Jim. That's very kind. Of. Yeah, Wendy, what's your, what are you planning for upcoming shows uh, uh, for what you're doing? Oh boy, I decided to take on Vlogmas because I participated in it like years ago. What is Vlogmas? And Can you explain? Vlogmas is um, a bunch of YouTubers will do this on, uh, well, YouTube. Um, and you vlog <laughs> from, you upload a video, a vlog type video uh -huh. um, every single day from the 1st to the 25th. That's what I'm doing with a review. But anyway, I didn't even know that was a thing. There, All right, yes, there, go ahead. there, there you go. Yeah, it's called Vlogmas. And I love vlogs like originally before we were even called the movie couple we mm -hmm. were it was like our zany life i wanted it to be a lifestyle vlog channel oh, yeah. um but we were doing like half vlog and half movie review and i was like you know what we need kind of a more of a a better theme than just like vlogs because it was kind of loosey-goosey and everywhere right, so i right. flipped the two um so so i've been trying to integrate vlogs back so mm. um it's just daily vlogs i don't i don't plan to you know like try to do i i don't want to try to produce it too much i want yeah. it to be more natural but what we do want to do in the vlogs is we want to go through some of these like christmas drive through events like the elves on the shelf mm. a little drive through thing uh pop up that they have and okay. i think there's one at six flags with all the lights do something like that we'll you know we'll, we'll we'll figure it out and then upcoming shows as far as like live streams and stuff you know we just cover movie news we got one uh uh tomorrow on wednesday oh, so okay. i actually have to do show notes for that but i usually do that at like midnight to make sure i wait for all the all the new stuff to come in before i like solidify notes <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense that yeah. totally makes sense um yeah all right cool and thanks so much for watching the uh, the reviews there jim yeah uh, we've had laura kelly join us uh for the last couple of weeks so uh, because our friend shannon mcclung sadly had his father unexpectedly pass away uh and we've been you know enjoying doing the reviews and glad that they're getting the numbers that they're getting on the channel you know so thank you so much for being a part of that jim thanks to everybody who's watching us now who maybe has watched those reviews uh let's see a uh, canada rock says here's a question for the both of you what beloved movie do you hate and what hated movie do you love interesting yeah uh wendy do you have a beloved movie that you hate and a hated uh, and hate is such a strong word like yeah it is <laughs> i may not a hundred percent like the lord of the rings movies but i can certainly watch them and enjoy numerous scenes and numerous stretches of, of time within each movie that i would never say that i hate any of those movies um, no for you it's the goonies oh yeah i don't like just do not like that movie there you go the goonies i just i don't get it why people like it i try watching it i don't it's so good any of the magic. i know i'm sorry 
I don't sense any of the magic that other people hey, enjoy guys. in those movies. What about you? Is there something you really love? I love, maybe an unpopular opinion, I love Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> yes. And people are like, what, that movie? I'm like, yeah, I freaking love it. Just kind of all over the place. It's random, it's fun, it's silly. And I, and I think it's really, really great. Uh, but I think when I tell people, they're like, why? I'm like, well, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's fun. Rosario Dawson's in it. Yes, she is. As, She's as, the as drummer. Rachel Lee Cook and Tar Tara Reid are in yeah. it as well. And yeah. um, who is it? Is it Alan Cumming and Missy yeah. Pyle? And yeah. Other, yeah. So, yeah. Actually, there you go. yeah. That's the right. Slow down brain never goes away. But, yeah, those, those <laughs> are the, <laughs> the things. Um, and is there one that you that everyone loves that you don't like? A Christmas story. Oh wow! I know. A Christmas I'll, I'll, story. I'll, I'll watch it, but it's not like if you ask me what would I watch, you know, in the in the holiday season. That's I, I usually leave that off my list. Yeah, yeah. All like right. it's good. I, I acknowledge that it's good. It's a classic. A lot of people. I don't hate it. Right. I don't. Right. I don't hate it. It's just not. And I, we and we own it. But it's just not one that I reach for. Like yeah. I probably would watch. I don't know. Home Alone or Elf before I watch a Christmas story. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. I, I uh, do not. I don't like Gone with the Wind. Everyone seems to love Gone with the Wind, but that bores me to tears. Uh, it's a long as, movie. As for a film that everybody hates, um, I would say A Million Ways to Die in the West. Uh, I can't explain to you why oh. I love that movie, but I love that movie. People hate it to pieces, but I love right? that movie. Another one is Staying Alive, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, the one that Stallone directed in 1983. I, I don't think um, I saw that. You know, oh man, you guys. Should I? Should I not? Just for the cheese factor alone, you've got to see it. <laughs> it. Travolta's never been in better shape than he was in that movie. Cynthia Rhodes, you know, from Dirty Dancing, she's in this thing. Fanola Hughes, who was, I guess, a big soap opera star, is in this thing. And the whole thing is Tony Manero has gotten to Broadway as an understudy. And the guy who's in the lead of the show that he's doing is messing it up, can't do it right. And so he's got to struggle with his confidence to push to the director to convince him to cast him in the lead of this show. And it's a whole thing. The VGs come back to do wow. some of the music. I own the soundtrack, love the music, love that movie, watch it every time. And Sylvester Stallone directed that damn movie. So it's wow. crazy. Wow. Okay. Very crazy. Uh, uh, Stupid Stars Music says, watch Big Sky if you have it. Hi, Wendy Roca. Yeah, have you seen uh, have, have you seen uh, this one, Big Sky? Mm, I don't think I have. Okay. okay. Have you? No, no. Uh, I've seen the trailers for it over and over and over again. They finally dropped the show. I will eventually find my way to that show, I imagine, yeah. because a lot of people are talking about it. But uh, good recommendation. Thank you, Stupid Stars Music. Really appreciate that. Um, and let's see if there's another one that rolled through here. Yeah, uh, yeah Average Joe says, you don't like the goodies? <laughs> That's uh, everybody's, li literally everybody's reaction <laughs> when you say, you're like, wait, what? It's true. It's true. What can I tell And then you? we ask you, consequently, do you like, and then like name every 80s movie. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah. And then yeah. the follow-up is like, but you like Transformers. That's true. Always that's, the trans that, that, I always That's, take that's always the follow-up. If you like the Transformers, like, let yeah. him like what he likes. Yeah. Meanwhile, that person has all the Adam Sandler films, including Jack and Jill on their <laughs> shelf. Uh, Doug, <laughs> Doug, Doug Developer says, hey, John and Wendy, when you guys moved to LA to be actors, at least how many TV spots slash commercials did you have to book per year in order to live, quote, comfortably and your date shop? Gigs include your El Polio Loco commercial or Shannon's Silicon Valley spot. Hey, Wendy's been in a few. She just had her Cadillac commercial. Cadillac, yeah. That rolled through a lot. So, yeah, I mean, Wendy, how many TV spots, commercials? I mean, things have changed so much since 10 years ago, you know, yeah. or 20 years ago. It depends. It depends. When I first came, obviously, it's non-union. So right. one spot's not going to cover you anything. It won't cover your rent. One yeah. spot won't cover your rent. It'll cover Truth. maybe your phone bill. Yeah, for, for for one spot, um, right. you would. So I definitely kept my day job for. I mean, I. Yeah, for for years and years and years. And whenever you book one, you still can't let your guard down. You're looking at the, you know, for like a national spot, like your your. And you and I know how much we make from like a national spot. Yeah, you get one yeah. of those. You're like, oh, okay, the money's great. First of all, you don't see the money for a little bit. Yep. Secondly, there's uh percentages that go to your agent or mm -hmm. manager or both. Uh, and then, uh, taxes. Yes. So you don't get the full amount. And then when you get it, it's like, I've seen some people are like, Oh, I'm going to buy 
something luxurious. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, so I'm just going to put it away. <laughs> like that's, that's, that's what I do. I just, I just put it away. I'll maybe treat myself to like a nice meal. Right. And I'll buy myself something a little fancy. Like I was like, Oh, like a hundred bucks. I can, I can blow like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to be really frugal with the, with the money that I make from, from acting because with acting, like when it rains, it pours, like I was telling mm -hmm. you prior to we uh, starting, like I've had four auditions this week, which is so awesome. Yeah. And people are like, Oh, well, what is it for? Are you going to get it? It's like, no, because 500 other people are is auditioning for the same yeah. part, maybe right. 500, maybe more. Yeah. So, so much, <laughs> so much is out of your hand, Wendy. We, we both know this is actors and actresses. We, we, so much is out of our hands. We just do what we can do and uh, hope for the best once we submit the audition. Uh, but being at home to self-tape allows you to be even more obsessive about your – you can control your audition a little bit more. I think that's been one of the positives that you haven't had to just walk into a, to a, a, a studio and deliver the audition and, and hope you nailed it. Uh, and not ask for a second or a third take. You do it yourself and then kind of combine them into one take and see if you can get away with that. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, There's good and bads of like self-tape at home. Yeah. I like the convenience of it. I like the best part is not having to search for a parking spot. That's my least oh favorite my thing to do. Yes. I got to a point where I was like, I will Uber to an audition. I don't mm -hmm. care. And then when, you know, when the people are driving, I'm just like reading my lights. <laughs> and, and, and I was kind of like, depending on how many pages I have, if it's a big audition and I have like for like four, five, six pages, then yeah. then I'll then I'll Uber. Yeah. Um, but other otherwise, I usually drive myself and then like leave. Like you know, it's like okay, I have I'm gonna get there 30 minutes before the audition, and it'll take me 20 minutes to find a spot. <laughs> okay, it gives me 10 minutes to run in, fix my hair, wipe the sweat, and look okay. That's right. That's what you get. And yeah, especially you get that three, you get that four o'clock Santa Monica audition, which is the worst. <laughs> the worst. Um, all right, we got 188 of you all watching us now live. Please uh, hit that wow. like button. We're only under 127 likes, so get us to 150 likes. Let's start marching towards 200 likes. Hit that thumbs up button. It takes you like literally two seconds to hit that thumbs up button. Thank you so much. Uh, let me bring in my producer, Sean Barato, to talk to people about how they can come in live and ask questions of Wendy and I live here on the channel. Keep sending in your Streamlabs and Super Chats. We will answer them throughout the show. We'll get into two other topics that I want to talk about with Wendy Lee and as well. But let's bring in Sean now. Sean, what's up, dude? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, John? Good. And have you met Wendy before? I have not. Good evening, Wendy. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. You're doing uh, an awesome job. Oh, th <laughs> <laughs> thank you. John doesn't never thanks me, but oh yeah, my come on. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, John. Roga, uh, we've talked about this. It's I know the stroking. He always needs the stroking. I forget. Well, not necessarily, but whatever. Uh, but uh, thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. So I outlaw the face nation. caressing, face caressing. I do that uh, no, I, uh, pass. <laughs> um, so, uh, good evening, Outlaw Nation. Welcome. Um, and so, if you guys are watching live, like John said, please hit the like button. If you're watching us post, also hit the like button and also leave a comment. A any old comment would do as long as it's respectful. It does help with the algorithm. So please do that. So if you are part of the Outlaw Nation Discord, the link is already in the discord so any ten dollar patron and up already has access to the link um mm. when you t click on the link it'll bring you to stream yards and then it will ask you to verify your mic and your headphone please try to use uh at least headphones otherwise we can get an echo situation and it does sound unpleasant so please try to do that and then it will bring you into backstage and then john will be able to see you and then he'll bring you in at any time so please try to have at least one question ready because we want to try to get as many questions as we possibly can through or for Wendy and John to answer. Yep. There you go. Thank you so much, Sean. Well, You're uh, awesome. Really appreciate it. Do you have a question for Wendy? <laughs> I do. I do. Of course. Um, so Wendy, um, I, my question is um, what I'm curious what your thoughts are about. <laughs> Somebody get it. Get, get that man a PS5. <laughs> man, a PS5. Get the, what game would you play on the PS5, Roka? Oh, I, I have I have um, eight games that I've purchased over the last couple of days because I was lucky PS5? enough to get a PS5. I was lucky enough uh, earlier in this year to put a deposit down. I caught Best Buy at 1 a.m. in the morning, and oh, they it went gosh. through. I was very lucky. So I bought FIFA. I bought uh, Valhalla. I've bought NHL 21. I got the Miles Morales game. Uh, I got Red Dead Redemption 2. So for those of you who have been asking me to play it, I bought... <laughs> 
the PS4 version and it upreses into the PS5. So I will be playing that once I get my Twitch channel going, which of course you can subscribe. The Outlaw Nation, all one word. Go do that now. I will once I get a maybe I should talk to J Justin. I'll pay you 50 bucks. You teach me how to put Twitch on, please, for God's sakes. Because nobody I'll, I'll loop you guys together. Yeah, because nobody in my crew could figure it out. They were stumbling over themselves OBS. trying to do it. So you have yeah. OBS. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough to watch. But anyway, ask your question, Sean. Uh, tough to watch. It was tough to watch you, you know, oh, whatever. Anyway. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, so, well the teacher maybe, never blames the student, but go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Anyways, um, my question for you is about Shang Chi. So um I know that that movie is obviously it's got finished and it's it's coming out hopefully next year, hopefully. Um, I'm just curious what your thoughts about it because I know as as a person in the black community how important a Black Panther was to our community and seeing representation of like having an all black cast um, in a superhero movie is really really powerful and important. So I'm just curious to uh, hear what your thoughts about having the same kind of movie uh for the asian community for with shang chi and how how you think that's going to have ripple effects going forward because i think the it, how well black panther did is the reason why we're getting uh shang chi and i think at somewhere down the road we might get a, a, a latin x uh led superhero movie um and then john be happy and things of that nature so i'm just curious <laughs> what your things are or maybe even an a force movie because i think that will also kind of be more of a representation movie as well so what are your thoughts about shang chi i am so excited uh i love simu lu i've ever i've started watching him in uh kim's convenience a long time ago so when it was announced at comic-con and he came on stage i was like wait is that Kim's convenience, he's going to be the, the superhero. And it kind of, it made me doubt myself because when the first words that he spoke was all in Chinese, he introduced himself mm. in Chinese. And I was like, wait, maybe, okay, maybe this is not the same actor. Maybe, I, maybe I've got it wrong because I'm all of a sudden very confused. And then he was kind of like, hey, Gaja, I speak both. And that right there, I feel like that's my represent representation right there. It's, it's, he's going to get the language right. It wasn't an actor that needed to learn the dialect or the language. Not that it's a bad thing. I think we should always be learning mm -hmm. things, but I, it'll come very easy and natural to him. And he will have, because of his, you know, um, his, his he, he'll have influences on the movie to say, hey, this is going to be important. Hey, this is going to be important. Um, just like Black Panther, you know, mm -hmm. when when the cast and they brought, they brought in uh, Ruth Carter to do the costume and stuff like that. I would love to see across the board you know like asian writers obviously actors stunt directors stunt team and thing and costumes and just so everybody has an input and the more and more we do this like inclusion really really matters what i love and i saw the mural that they painted at downtown disney of um kind of to honor chadwick boseman of him you know doing the the wakanda sign with the little boy in the mask oh, yeah. right yeah i would love to see that moving forward for little girls for young Asian kids, you know, I, for, for kids of all ethnicity, I think mm. they need that more than we need that. Yeah, um, there, there's never been a time where I, you know, would watch American TV and I would see, you know, like an Asian girl. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that, that, that's me. I, I exist here, <laughs> you know, and I, and I want to, I would love to see more of that. And I hope that with, you know, Shang-Chi that we can get more, uh, representation and inclusion inclusion like we're getting with miss marvel the tv show yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's yeah. it's starting it's starting uh i wish we have would have started it earlier but i guess better late than never sort of a deal so i'm very very excited to see what kind of effect this is, is going to uh, bring to hollywood mm. yeah all right good go sean yeah yeah all right. i hope i answered your question <laughs> no, when your question did of course you did yeah yeah and i'll stroke you later all right thanks sean oh, get out. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's bring in uh my brother mike shea who runs the outlaw nation facebook page shea what's up dude oh y'all are black and white uh, yeah i don't know my, my lighting is weird today i'm not sure what the uh problem is sorry my computer is making noises um, it's no noir so, first of all, John, I was not yes. tripping over my feet trying to help you. Your video froze halfway through, and we couldn't see anything. So, I mean, potato, potato, man. Potato, potato. <laughs> first of all, I, too, unapologetically love A Million Ways to Die in the West. And, and people who hate that movie can suck an egg, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Wendy, my sister is obsessed with Ahsoka Tano. Yay. 
I love showing her. I've shown her all of you, all the outfits and stuff you've done for that and for Mulan. And um, so I guess kind of a two part question is, what's that hey, loud noise? Is that that is you? My, my computer's being weird, and because I have that roadcaster, everything okay. goes. Through it, so yeah, I'll try to cut it down a little bit. Um, okay. Yep. But uh, when you're when you're looking, what do you look for when you're looking to? create like a character costume or or a cosplay and are there any you haven't done yet or one that's just like you really want to do it and just haven't gotten around to making it happen yet oh thank you so much first of all for showing people my Instagram. that's awesome the first thing i do is i look at the color scheme i think color blocking and everything is super recognizable so for ahsoka you definitely want that blue and white and you want the kind of chevron pattern um, and then you can add your, whether it's orange or gray or purple, um, a little bit of blue. So depending on what she's wearing and you kind of want to bring that vibe into your outfit. So color is like the most important part, I think. And luckily with, there's so many geek brands, whether it's, um, a bigger brand like Hot Topic in her universe or, a uh, smaller independent brands like a Hoffer design, they have so many options now that you can, you know, start there. And then you can, once you start building that, you can kind of go, okay, well, I have already this type of look in my closet. If I just mush it together, it'll look like this character, but mm. you know, daily life versus like them where, so you're not really cosplaying. You're kind of like Disney bounding or, or Star Wars bounding. Um, a character that I really want to do, and I haven't gotten to it because I haven't gotten to the point where the outfits that I'm picking out doesn't look cosplay yet. It still looks too cosplay to me, but it's, mm -hmm. oh God, what's her name? Punchline? Joker's uh, new girl. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. I think her her look is so cool. But the outfit I put together, I'm like, this is so cosplay. I don't want to like wear this to go grocery shopping. So yeah. <laughs> I'm her, still working process. Her look is badass. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah. an interesting one to take for sure. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Awesome. Is that actually your question, brother? It does answer my question. Well, my other question is okay. just how's the Twitch thing going? But uh, also just when <laughs> Wait, how's that going? Ah. There's a Twitch thing going, um, but obviously, that's great. and then just the work, yeah. like, Wendy. Don't be too nice to Sean. Like it, it sets a bad precedent. I've just yeah. met him. Agree, agree. And, yeah. And then we all have to do it. And, Ooh, and it's so annoying because he needs it all the time. Let's, I've uh, just met him. I, I let him produce the show so he could stop crying about it. That's what Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh no. my Sean, goodness! I'm just joking. Sean is the best. Sean is like, wow. wow. <laughs> no, Sean is the best. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mike. Great to see you, my man. Bye. Much love to you, dude. Uh, I love Mike Shea. He's one of the best. Um, you got some great people on your team, man. I, I'm very lucky. No lie, yeah, I'm very lucky. Still, uh, you know, it could have gone. It can go so many different ways. So I'm very lucky. So many people have come aboard and been a part of it. And when I've been like doubting things or not sure what to do with the channel, they've been a great resource to kind of help me talk it over and give me some ideas and tips and pointers because they uh, are on YouTube themselves or they enjoy watching a lot of YouTube comments so they can give me uh, content so they give me great pointers um uh let's move on to Wonder Woman 84 uh, Wendy this is a, a character you would love and enjoy as well this is going to streaming now I mean Wendy a year ago impossible to even consider this uh and it's crazy to see how quickly this change has happened in the industry with these movies. And now, I mean, coming to America streaming next year, the, the sequel. And now we have this uh, coming and soul coming on the same day. How shocked are you about Wonder Woman 84 going to streaming? Uh, I mean, I think at this point this year, nothing happens, surprises me anymore. Yeah. I am disappointed. I really, really felt like this movie was made, it is made for the big screen, and there was nothing more that I wanted to put on all my Wonder Woman stuff head to toe. I'll wear the tiara, <laughs> wear the bracers, I don't care. Yeah. Um, go to the movie theater and buy myself like the biggest popcorn and soda and just have a good time and watch, you know, Diana and, and Cheetah like fight it out on screen. I really, yeah. really was looking forward to it. So to hear that, because like Patty Jenkins was so um, kind of, strong in her believing that this movie will go to theaters. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I stand behind you. This is going to go to theaters. Like, well, right. wait. But at this point, you know, studios don't have like, okay, like this movie is done and we're just going to like, they have things planned for a year to two years down the line mm -hmm, mm -hmm. already, even if things are in production. So they have like calendars and slots that they have to look at, I think. So do they, and, and again, with this pandemic, that's what's so frustrating about it is, yeah. 
we don't know when it will end. People are like, oh, well, it's going to end when, when we get the vaccines. Like, well, is it though? Is everybody literally going to be able to get it and afford it? Or like, well, how, how is that right. going to happen? Good how point. effective really is? Like, we don't know until we get there. So yeah. I think they made the best decision that they can for Wonder Woman. Um, I am sure they are crushed. I am yeah. sure that they fully wanted to see this in theaters. Uh, what I would like to do when, obviously I'm buying it on streaming, whenever you know on christmas yeah. actually mark ellis texted me like the day the news news dropped and he's like so i guess i know what movie you're watching on christmas day <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh yeah oh yeah i was like nobody's nobody talked to me i'm watching wonder woman i'm watching it five times right um but i also if i can find it at a drive-in i want to oh, do yeah. it that way so it's not quite like the same movie going experience to be wow. around people and and scream and gasp and shout and and laugh uh, you know at things together but it's the next best way to celebrate the film. So I will support them twice in that way. Do you have, do you have a, I, I've put this theory out there and I don't know if people, and some people have like been like, no, uh, but do you think it's possible that Warner brothers put this to streaming because they're not a hundred percent happy with the film. And so they think, well, we'll get as many eyeballs as possible on this movie and recoup a lot of our uh, money or expenditures by dropping it on streaming, by encouraging people to sign up to HBO max. That's our way to get subscribers. And yeah, maybe we'll mm. sacrifice a bit of a hit because it hasn't been screened for anybody that I know of. Wendy, have you seen it? Are you allowed to say if you've seen it? Yeah. I haven't I, seen it. Haven't uh, heard anything. Haven't it, talked to anybody that I know. Yeah. I, I would have heard you and I both would have heard. Yeah. I would have heard something. Some, something in, saw it. Exactly. So I, I'm surprised by the fact that no screenings have happened yet. We're in, we're starting December. So I imagine if Didn't they're they do the same it, with the first Wonder Woman though. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, there was also right? that controversy. I don't, re right? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah but I yeah. loved it. I yeah. I loved the first Wonder Woman. Me I too. I think. Uh, no, I think the marketing has been pretty good for this okay. one. It was always in conversation for me, um, especially with uh, you know hosting for Sideshow. We see a lot of right. uh, during their Sideshow Con for New York, like New York Con or something like that. They had mm -hmm. you know different. Um, Wonder Woman like collectibles and statues and figures. So I feel like the conversation, like at least for me, it never ended. And I feel like the market has been pretty good yeah. for this one. And people are still excited. There, it was definitely like a huge segment of what was the, the DC fandom. Yeah. So I don't feel like they're trying to to hide anything. I think okay. people people have very high expectation for this movie because of you know who comes back, who's in it. Right. And, right. and where the storyline is going to go. So I'm, I don't feel like it, you know, if they tested it, like, I don't feel like it tested badly, but I mean, I don't know. Okay. I wasn't in those tests, but right, right, it doesn't, right. it doesn't seem that way to me. Okay. Okay. I mean, cause Mulan, you know, Mulan had received kind of middling reviews yeah. and, and got dropped on the, ch on uh, streaming and uh, Artemis Fowl had ha ha got terrible reviews mm. and got dropped on streaming. So I, I don't know what the, what the issue, what the uh, thing, and, but soul from everyone I know who's, <laughs> Who has seen it through a couple of or a few Disney contacts that I have had? All they talk about is how great that movie is. It's going to be a, a, like one of these like top five Pixar movies ever made type conversation. So uh, that one seems to be being dropped because they want to drop it at this time. It's a great way to encourage people to sign up for Disney Plus if they haven't yet, which is by the way blowing the doors oh. off their expectations for subscriber numbers. So it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, with with season two of Mandalorian and yeah. what's coming up with WandaVision, um, yeah, and with right. Soul, Soul is another one that I really wanted to experience in theaters. Yeah. We got to see um, little bits of it uh, during D twenty three, yeah, and it looks so good. The music's going to sound so good, and that's yeah. one that I also wanted, like the surround sound, the full theatrical experience, and like ugly cry in a movie theater because that's what <laughs> Pixar films do to you. <laughs> Do the, Anthony, do the Anthony Anderson? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, let's get into some stream, uh, some more stream, super chat stream labs here, and uh, we'll bring in someone live here. Galen Sh Galen Shumway says, "Do you think we will see a Inquisitorious upcoming in a season of Mando?" An Inquisitor, I guess he's trying to say. Grogu reaches out, and reaches out to the dark side instead of a instead of the light side, and an Inquisitorious who was created by Filoni shows up. Yeah, what do you think about that, Wendy? Is that a possibility? Oh, I mean, they're so cool looking. Mm. I 100% would love to see it. I don't know if it quite fits uh, oh. in into the, the theory. Right now, the theory is that when they go to the temple on, I think, Tython, right? 
Yeah. Uh, they people are saying. I mean, I'm seeing. I'm reading two different things on Twitter. I'm reading a lot of Luke. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's Luke. one of the. That's the first place I went to in my mind, but only because I'm old enough to have seen the new, the old original trilogy in the theater. So <laughs> Luke is the first Jedi. Plus, the timeline kind of works. The timeline I'm a badass works. Luke. Yeah. Right. That works. And then uh, another one. People are saying Cal. Mm hmm. So that's Cal another Kestis. one. Yeah. 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 Who, by the way, whose lightsaber I heard is coming to Galaxy's Edge. There was like a poll that they put out of like what lightsaber you would like to see next to Galaxy's Edge and people voted. And Cal was like the highest one that was voted. Mm -hmm. And I, so I think they're bringing it to Galaxy's Edge. I haven't followed up on the news. So I don't know. But if you want to look yeah. at it from like the merchandise point of view, yeah. if they're going to create his lightsaber, it's very possible that he also shows up. Yeah, that's a great because point. You know, then, then you see it on the show. You're like, oh my god, I want that. And you need to go to downtown Disney and you buy it. Yeah, you make some so, money. But that's exactly. again, yeah, yeah exactly. That, that's like me with the Ahsoka Tano lightsabers. I'm like, oh, I want. <laughs> give, I want give, and I bought. Give me, give me. Uh, <laughs> totally understood. Yeah, the Quisitorius are just they're awesome, awesome characters. We saw them in Rebels, so like seeing them be a part of this would be badass as well. Sean says, uh, take my money for sure. Take my money. Yeah, absolutely. you know the one thing I don't want the Mandalorian to become, and yeah. I, I don't think it will. Uh, but I don't want it to be too cameo heavy from this point on. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I, I worry like about that been, too much. Yeah, some people have been talking about that, Wendy, that it's starting to kind of move away from the Mandalorian as it expands the universe. You're missing one of the things, you might be sacrificing one of the things that made the Mandalorian so great was that it was its own story telling its own, uh, with its own characters, new characters that didn't have to do with the Mandalorian. But I think they're setting this all up to have this massive battle at the end with Cobb Vanth coming back, Bo-Katana, uh, the other Mandalorians, uh, you know, Sasha Banks, uh, who is in there, and also uh, Ahsoka Tano, possibly, all coming back to have this battle with Moff Gideon and his crew, and maybe his dark uh, his dark uh, stormtroopers or dark uh, fighters there that were there. So all of that is a possibility um, as well. All right, let's bring in Brennan. Uh, Brennan, what's up, dude? How are you? Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hi, how are you? Good. I've been a fan of yours since the old uh, AMC Collider days. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. That's years. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I've been hanging around. Um, my, my thought was about the Mandalorian or another Star Wars property. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see Ahmed Beth's character? Keller and Beck make an appearance, not necessarily as a lead character, mm. but in a flashback or in a side role, so that Ahmed kind of gets to return to the Star Wars franchise in a way that kind of redeems him. Uh, he already has been, because I think Ahmed is great. Right, right. But to really get a chance to shine has this new character he's playing. Yeah, I would I would <laughs> love to see that. Uh assuming that uh, maybe he wouldn't be, well, could he be Jar Jar? No, right? It wouldn't the no. timeline wouldn't match up. It wouldn't be no. Know. But I think I think it would be nice for for the fans to see him in not a different light, but the treatment, you know, was like so poor. Yeah. For him and and it and it makes you feel bad because he was just doing a job that he was hired to do. Um, so it was really, really unfortunate. The the it went from like hating the character to hating the actor. Yeah, it's like he didn't do anything that he wasn't supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, I would love for him to be kind of included back. I like seeing him. He hosted that show, like the Jedi Temple, the Jedi yeah, yeah. Challenge That's the, the show. character that I'd like to see him. Yeah, come back. yeah, yeah. So cute, love it. And just uh, getting to see Jedi Master Beck, you know, yeah, be a, a Zen sort of guy and very you know wise Jedi master. Mm -hmm. I think you make an excellent point, Brennan, the fact of closing the circle here, right? There's already been rumors about Hayden Christensen coming back in some form as Anakin mm, down yeah. the road. So uh, to kind of close that loop and the circle is now complete. Yeah, exactly. And you let him come back. He's got had some time away. A lot of people were pushing and thinking he might show up in Rise of Skywalker. So there were certainly some some ideas of kind. Of, and look, George Lucas was on the set of The Mandalorian, which we found out from the Vanity Fair article, supervise or not supervising, but certainly being there with Filoni to mm -hmm. monitor how he was uh, bringing Ahsoka Tano life through Rosario Dawson. So. What's old is new again, and also once you spend a little bit of time away from something, people start to miss you, right? And so 
having George Lucas show up, having uh, uh, Ahmed Best come back and be a part of this now that people have kind of reevaluated their feelings about the Jar Jar character. And you can still feel it's a racist character. It's just that what went through, what Ahmed Best was put yeah. through. Ahmed not should not have had to go through that. Exactly. And he speaks very openly about the, the mental health stuff that it affected. And I think there was the, a possible suicide attempt that was involved in this as well. It's very difficult to take that kind That's of hate worldwide. Same. You know? Seeing him return to Star Wars Celebration to massive yeah. applause yeah. was so touching. Yep. That was the closing of the loop for the fans. Now, close the loop for the actor to put him into a, yes. a character that yeah. you could put him on in canon in an actual series or scene uh, or even episode. That would be great to see. I agree with you mm, okay. a thousand percent, Brennan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy. Cool. Thank you, thank you John. You. Thank you, brother. Good to see you, brother. Good to see, see you guys. guys. Oh, pretty awesome stuff. Love Brennan. Uh, all right, let me see if we've got some uh, Streamlabs. Please keep sending in the Streamlabs and Super Chats, people. We want to get into a good number here. Uh, so please send them. You see the address above Wendy's head, uh, and you can send in your Super Chats as well. I prefer Streamlabs because YouTube takes 33%. So please, Streamlabs are better for us overall. Uh, Aaron Kleister wants to know, thanks for answering my last question with great movies. I had a very similar reaction to The Greatest Showman. <laughs> okay, good to know. Now, question two, speaking of Fincher, which one is better for you uh, between Fincher's Zodiac Zodiac or seven versus Nolan's insomnia. Yeah. Wendy, do you have a preference mm. amongst these three? Fincher. You would take the Zodiac, Zodiac or seven over Nolan's yeah. insomnia. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think, I think so. And they're all, no, oh, that's really hard actually. You know, the more I'm thinking about it. Okay. I'm going to stop thinking about it and I'm going to go with my first answer. <laughs> yeah. Because with, with seven, that, that movie like did stuff to me where I watched it. I was like, mm. wait, what's what? Uh, yeah, it, you know, and I hadn't the, the experience of, of watching it and kind of your thought process for like days after. Yeah. I like that movies that kind of keeps you in and makes you think about it. And then you wish that everybody had already seen it. So mm -hmm. you can talk to them about it and have a discussion. And seven's one of those movies where I'm like, mm, <laughs> made me think. Yes. Yes, queen. Yes. Um. <laughs> yes. Like the hands makes me think of blockers. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I would take I would take Fincher's Zodiac over Nolan's Insomnia any day, and definitely put uh, Fincher's Seven over Nolan's Insomnia. I don't yeah. think I think there's just some elements. Of, like, having seen the original, the one with uh, Stellan Skarsgård, if you haven't seen that one, do yourself a favor. And by the way, that's on Criterion. That's a great Criterion to own for sure. So go and watch that original. It's a lot better than uh, than uh, Nolan's. Even though Nolan's is good, it's just a lot better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Pastry Dash Cigar Don't Smoke. He said, I may not be quite as big of a Star Wars fan as either of you, but I bet you've been talking Mandalorian, so this is just a random thing I'm saying will happen in the show. At some point in the series, the character Revan shows up. What do you think he'd do? Wow. Wendy. Thoughts on this? To have Revan, Revan show up? Yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to put together one of the the most confusing thing for me about the Mandalorian is I have to constantly remind myself of the timeline. Yeah. That that we're in because when we were watching and I was watching uh, the magistrate and I was like, oh, she's got a staff, so like Maul, Maul's apprentice, right? And then as mm. soon as I said it, I was like, no, stupid, <laughs> he died. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, uh, you know, so I have to constantly I. Revan would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. It, it would be, it would be very, that's a, uh, I don't think Revan's ever been in. Not, not anything in, live action. I don't think. Never live action. Yeah. In animated. Yeah. No, no. Mm -hmm. Right. Just the books. Yeah. yeah I think just the books. So just that would books. be a very so different. The legends. Thing. Yeah. I mean, but also Wendy, how does he, that's the thing. Maybe he, I don't know if he shows up in the Mandalorian. I think he, cause timeline, he would have to show up maybe in that, uh, that new show they're doing about the Jedi, the high order of the Jedi or whatever. I think the old that Republic would, stuff, yeah, that yeah, would, that would, Republic. that would be more, more fitted for, for him, yeah. uh, than, than having him try to come in and like, what would he even, Oh God, that's making my mm. head hurt. I don't think I don't think he would work in it. as much as I would love to see like a bunch of Star Wars characters um, in the show. It's it's got to be relevant and it's got to it's got to work. And I just in my head, like the timeline's not working. Yeah, but I would agree. love to 100 percent see Revan in live action, just like yeah. a different show. Yeah, definitely a different show. A thousand percent agree. Uh, let's see. OK, uh, these are now stream. Uh, these are not super chats. Let me wheel back to a couple of these super chats here. 
Uh, Lewis Cox says, oh, man, Jedi Fallen Order was great. Need Jedi Fallen Order 2. Give it uh, to us. Yeah, funny little story. I texted during the Black Friday sales over the weekend. I texted um, or uh, DM'd rather uh, Alex Damon. Uh, mm -hmm. And I said, Alex, if uh, Squadrons is $20, Jedi Fallen Order is $25, which one should I get? And he said, um, he broke it down for me. And he said, if he said something about like, if you want a uh, first person game with a better story, that's the one. Let, let me read what he said here real quick. I love both games, but Fallen Order is my shit. If you want a single player story, go fall in order it's longer and better if you want something you'll play more against people or with friends then get squadrons i've played it far more but the story isn't as good it's not the focus of the game also in its adventure it's an adventure game versus a space flight simulator so whichever of those sounds better to you uh and so i went with jedi fallen order because that sounds better to me storyline wise so i can't wait to get into it did you play it wendy i ooh. <laughs> I don't think I fin. I don't think I beat it. Okay, all right. I don't think I don't because I'm trying because I'm trying to remember where I left off, which I can't. I can't remember. I don't think I finished it. I yeah. You will definitely. He nailed it on the head uh, yeah. with his answer. It, it's too. They're both good. They're both fun. Okay. I haven't played Squadron yet, but I've watched way too many like Twitch streams to be like. Ah. <laughs> um, and we want to get it, but we also want it for like the VR. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, I really, really want it for the VR, just uh, to to kind of be completely immersed in in, in you know in flying and space battles. But mm -hmm. I think knowing you, I think you would enjoy Jedi Order, Fallen Jedi Order, so much more because it's it is more of an adventure and it's yeah. it, and it's just as immersive. They're both immersive, but in different ways. And mm -hmm. and I personally prefer like the adventure games. Like I love Legend of Zelda and things mm -hmm. like that. So, um, like, would love absolutely to see like a second game come out yeah, for yeah. Jedi Fallen Order too. So, yeah. let me know when you did you purchase? Yeah, I I bought it. It's sitting right over there as well. You know, once I figure once I finish Miles, then I'll jump into Jedi Fallen. Yeah, Order. have you started playing Miles already? Yes, I have started playing Miles. Oh my God. God, I'm so I'm so jealous. <laughs> Wendy, it's it's uh for lack of a, it's like it's an addiction, man. You start Is to it? play and two hours are gone before you know it. I have not experienced this in a very, very long time. That's good, um, man. You need to take yeah. a load off. You do so much. <laughs> Go enjoy your video games. Yeah, I felt good <laughs> on a Saturday. It was like playing, and next thing you know, my girlfriend walks in, and she goes, what are you doing for lunch? I go, lunch? What time is it? She goes, it's 2 <laughs> o'clock. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm looking. I just couldn't believe it because you have to, you know, I, I'm not 17 anymore. Where my my thing is quicker. My hand to <laughs> co eye coordination is quicker. So I have to figure these things out. But the the the, the graphics are incredible. The voice acting is fantastic fantastic the look of it the vibe of it the music all of it is just so much fun to play so much so that i bought the uh the the spider-man ps4 game finally because they had the uh, updated edition so oh, i you bought, bought yuri's that. game i bought yuri's because i had yuri on the show a couple of I weeks saw. ago yeah he was great to have on the show and uh, he revealed on the show how he's a bigger part of miles morales than people were initially mm -hmm. told so uh i i love hearing his voice on the game it just makes me smile. i text him all the time i go i'm sitting here like a big grinning like a big fucking idiot thinking about you as i hear your voice over my game cons console oh, uh <laughs> he's awesome Awesome. Uh, yeah. Real quick, Buckeye Jet says, due to the Oscars sagging ratings, if money wasn't a factor, shouldn't the film industry consider doing away with all the award shows prior, uh, like a Golden Globe, SAG, PGA? This way, there could be at least some surprises in, in the winners, a la like the Grammys. Uh, what do you think, Wendy? Yeah, should they go away with all the award shows so you don't know if there's a uh, momentum coming or building for a certain actor or director or film? Uh, or should they just do? Yeah, but I don't think the Oscars can do that, can they? they can't I don't. Turn. I don't. Well, because it's it's. I don't know the qualifications for like a Grammy if it's the same as for all the mm. films that enter in the Oscars. So like, there's that whole time period, and I know they changed it a bunch of times. I can't even keep up anymore. But it's like it has to be in the screening room for the judges by this time, or it has to be in theaters for this many days for it to qualify. Right. So I think naturally you want to build the momentum for a certain performances for certain leads and supporting and everything encompassing a film. I think, I think that's the way, and maybe I'm just kind of stuck in that mm. way that the Oscar has been like that for so long that yeah. I can't really imagine it a different way. And I love, I do love watching kind of, you know, studios push for their films. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I love seeing seeing that, and I and I love picking like a film to champion. Like last year for me, it was Parasite. I was like, yeah, yeah Parasite, everything, and I was so 
just excited and also like surprised. I was like, oh, they're going to keep winning. All right. This is the best ever. I was like screaming. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fredtastic314 says, uh, Grogu calls a Dark Force user who battles Din Djarin, causes him to use the Force against the Dark user. Din realizes he needs to raise, not train the ways of right and wrong. Interesting. Hmm, that is interesting because I know everybody was not sure if they should be mad at Grogu or not for eating the frog eggs. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> People are so upset about that. My uh, thing was, look, Din just needs to learn to pack a little snacky, little snack box <laughs> for Grogu. That's that's all you got to do. You know what he likes. Just make a little make a little lunchbox. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah, uh, I agree. It could be interesting. I don't think they're going that way because the force him. I mean, that would be such a stark left turn that they would take yeah. where a character would walk away from their force powers and although um ahsoka tano alluded to that when she said like he's been hiding his powers for a long time in order to survive the fact that he's been using his powers throughout the entire two seasons of of um the mandalorian and really he didn't use them until this past episode it tells you that he you know he understands the situation and can use them when they work for him so yeah i'd be surprised if he'd fully walk away from that possibility yeah. uh let's see here uh okay sean Berto says can you give us a behind the scenes discussion about the lightsaber fight at the place you both used to work at oh yeah when did you want to talk about that a little bit Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so the place is actually how we met, which is like really, really yes, funny. It's like, how did you meet true. your husband? And it's like, oh, we met learning how to sword fight. <laughs> uh, it's a place called, it's in Burbank mm -hmm. and it's called a uh, sword play LA. I don't know if they're currently open or not. I'm going to guess not because of the pandemic, but it's essentially a fencing studio. So um, the the owner uh, Tim Weske, he's a he's a fencing instructor and a fencer, um, and also did a lot of training. So he trained Brad Pitt, Sandra Bullock. He did the choreography for Firefly. The yeah. episode it's called The Shindig with Nathan Fillion. Right. He choreographed that. He did a couple of stuff for Angel, a singing Gilmore Girls. So there there's the whole background in like stunts and and fencing for um, television and film. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, Dustin's been training longer than I have, but we both kind of um, joined like their their stunt team where if they had, you know, a production come in and say, hey, we need, you know, like utility fighters or can you put this fight together for us? Mm -hmm. uh, and then he would have people to be able to pull from his team to use, whether it's to be on set or it's to use as like a concept sort of a thing. And that's kind of that's kind of how how it got started and i have always 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 loved and wanted to learn you know stage combat and and sword mm. fighting and in florida like it just like i just didn't know how to even like where do you where do you go for that do you like google stunt <laughs> fighting i don't know i don't even think i tried to do that back then because i was so focused on other things in entertainment yeah. like dance and stuff and i came out here and it was like the it was actually through an audition mm. they were auditioning for um birthday party entertainers who would do uh, a short uh, and very safe sword fight at a kid's birthday party. Yeah. That's how, that's how it started. And uh, so one thing kind of led to another and like became obsessed and, you know, like for birthday parties, we get to dress up as Jedis for, mm -hmm. um, you know, like stunt team nights, we get to fight with, you know, sword and shield or mm -hmm. rapier and dagger or like spears and, and staff things or sometimes it's hand to hand. So it's right. so much fun. That's awesome. I, I think Sean also might be referring to the lightsaber fight we had at uh, that place we oh, used to work that. at together. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that we were—that was like a big thing that they it were was. planning for a, a long time. Yeah, and uh, uh, I remember it was like like a couple of days before I, we obviously had already known about this. Like mm -hmm. production had had known about this, but. Um, it was kind of like, well, we have so many people and Frank, you know, Frank, the editor was like, Hey, um, do you, do you, you know, I, I kind of want, want you to choreograph this. And I was like, Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. So I came home that night and me and Dustin and our friend Adam happened to be staying over that night. Cause they had an early gig the next day and it was easier yeah. for them to carpool. I was like, do you guys mind putting together some fights with me? So we did various versions of a one-on-one -on -one fight, of a two-on-one -on -one fight, of a two-on-two -two fight. And yeah. we decided um, moves that can be learned very quickly, but still looked pretty cool. 
mm-hmm. on screen. So and there and and like a lot of it was adjusted on the day of, which always happens. On set. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. What you get. But it was like so much fun because you know we had like the Jedi Council and the Rule of Two kind of face off. Yeah. And then the whole office just erupted in things. And my favorite was, and I had nothing to do with this. It was this was all Josh McCuga. Mm-hmm. But his his like la, 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 la. yeah with and then uh, you yeah <laughs> yeah and then and then yeah and then I I, I slashed Jay across the back yeah <laughs> sorry Jay Washington <laughs> uh, and then my favorite part was watching you who did you fight was it you and Riley. you and Jet oh oh right that Riley. was my favorite because everybody was essentially taught the same choreography yeah yeah but i would flip certain things uh to make it looks just a little bit different and depending on what angle you filmed it would look mm-hmm. different but i think it was the the final move of who was going to kill who or would you break off and fight somebody else right um and when we decided that that you were going to take the final blow <laughs> i was like yeah yeah like roca could like act to this but that's still my favorite moment if i watch that video i watch back and i'm like the light went out in his eyes how do you do that that was a lot of fun i just was like and I, I was doing so many shows at that time like i didn't get a chance to be a part of this that much from the beginning because so many people were involved and it was so great so when they pitched me this idea, i'm like yeah sure i'll do a quick thing where riley kills me it's a lot of fun so it jumped out did our thing and then he does it and then just like to me it's always the my favorite death scenes whenever i watch any death scenes in a battle in a fight is when they just kind of look up and everything just goes out you know so that's all i thought of. i was like all right as soon as he hit me i was like everything's gone and then just went right down. It was great. So much fun. It was so do you remember what, what you was. said after after no. you saw the footage? What did I say? You looked at it like like a like a freaking actor, like <laughs> all of us. You watch the footage and you're like, as you walk away, oh, could have pushed harder. <laughs> yeah. I was like, come on, it was Shameless. so good. Shameless. <laughs> Shameless. Yeah. Uh yeah, definitely. That's what happened. It was great. And everyone was really on board with it, you know, and uh, Riley and uh, and uh, uh, Harloff and everybody was involved. They had a really, I think Harloff was but they all had a really great time doing it. So it was it was a blast. Harloff uh, learned hard. Like yeah, he, he did. like like he he was just kind of like, okay, and again, and again, and again. Yeah. And I knew he had to like I think he had some family stuff that he had to get to as oh, well. Right. That's right. So That's right. so I he there I saw like the concentration and he was just like, okay. And we and we do this, right? And I was like, I mean, you got it. Okay, we can just <laughs> we can just shoot now. <laughs> uh Tushka wants to know with it getting colder outside, what underappreciated or unknown Christmas movie do you love to stay in and watch? For me, the night before is one of my favorites that I watch each year. I may or may not introduce it to my 15-year-old nephew this year. Uh, I would say don't, but then again, I don't, you know, I don't know how you parent or uncle. Uh, what do you think, Wendy? Do you have a film? I haven't, that, I haven't seen that one. Is it like really? Yeah. Oh, it's so fucking good, but it is pretty hardcore with the drugs and the oh. partying. And yeah, okay. and uh, there's some how stuff. How old is the kid? Some. The kid's 15. So I don't know. Mm, hmm. Got to toe that line. I don't know. Maybe yeah. ask for parents' permission. Yeah. And, and by <laughs> the way, Tushka, it's good to see you. Uh, in here, I know you've been dealing with the COVID diagnosis, so I'm glad you're you're oh, in no. here, my man. So good to see you. Uh, but Wendy, is there a hidden Christmas movie that you like? Uh, don't tell too many people about that you really enjoy. Mm, no, I'm pretty outspoken about what I watch <laughs> on, uh, for Christmas. You know what I do love, and I yeah. say it all the time: those your stereotypical Christmas romantic hallmark movies oh yeah i watch all of those the good ones and the bad ones and i will yell at my tv (laughs) during the bad ones the entire time or i'll like like rage tweet i'm like what is it i'm watching but i'll still watch it until the end and i don't care and then sometimes because i'm a glutton for punishment i'll be like oh maybe i'll like it like if i just watch it again <laughs> for me, that was like the I think it's called the Christmas Switch, the one with Vanessa Hudgens. Oh yeah, the Christmas Princess Switch or whatever the Christmas yeah. Switch. Yeah. Yep, yep. I wanted to like it so much, and it still hasn't clicked with me. So I'm gonna oh. give it a try again because they came out with the second one. The trailer is super cute. Yeah, yeah. Now I have a friend who's directing her second uh, Hallmark Christmas movie. Uh, the first one she did last year, I think it was called Two Turtle Doves. So, I, and I dated a girl years ago who was just uh, an addict to uh, Christmas movies. She is now one of the head writers over, I think, head writer over at uh, the James Corden show that he does on CBS. She was wow. So at the time when we were dating, I think this is early two thousands. Uh, I was so into her that I sat down and I recorded like 
hours of Hallmark Christmas movies and brought them over on a VHS tape for her to watch while she was working on a packet to pitch herself and her uh, co-writer onto a show. So like those are the links that I went to. And by watching them, I became like someone who enjoyed watching those. Because I mean, the formula is pretty much the same, right? You just want to enjoy some Christmas stuff and have a little fun. If you turn your brain off about like judging the script or the characters or anything like that, or the you motivation. can't. Then you won't. Yeah. Then you won't like it because yeah, exactly. then you just then you just hate it. You'd be like, "Oh, look, it's, it's so cheesy." Of course, it's cheesy. It's got the tro- <laughs> all the tropey stuff. It's got the snowball fight, and after you do the snow, somebody you know falls down in the snow, and then that's like, "Oh, I look they into your eyes, low. and now I love you." Exactly. <laughs> oh, you're the doctor I always knew I love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like Andrew Cook here in the bleak midwinter. This is a film that a lot of people don't talk about. It's it's shot in black and white. If I think you're talking about the right one in America, it's called a Midwinter's Tale, and I think Brana directed this one. It's a short little indie film. Oh, not short, but it's an indie film in black and white about this guy who is directing a, a directing. I think Macbeth at a theater or directing something at a theater or the Scottish play, rather, should I say, at a theater uh, and uh, or or Hamlet, and then gets called. Joan Collins plays his agent, gets called to be the lead in this science fiction epic movie and he has to decide whether to leave the production and go be this lead or stay and uh, finish out this production because he started doing the production when he got rejected from another franchise movie and was upset and wanted to fall back in love with acting it's a really cool wow uh, film that uh it's and I, I can't remember the actor's name it's michael something and i've seen him in a million things since on british television but yeah uh let's bring in some uh some live people wendy real quick let's bring yeah. in Tushka, who is surviving right now. With what are you doing? Hey. You should be resting. Hey, fucking fluids. Well, if you'd close the window, I mean, we got all the <laughs> snow everywhere. You're letting it in, man. That's true. No. That's true. Hey, man. hey, good to see you, brother. Hey, you hey too, Wendy. Brother. Hi. Hey, uh, real quick, I got it. I'm doing good. Um, got a question for you. Uh, so the new Animaniacs is out, mm-hmm. and it's pretty good. And ever since I heard your name, I thought you should be a lyric. At the end of it, <laughs> they say totally and zany. I'm like, Wendy Lee zany? Like, yep, Wendy Lee zany. Goes and, hand uh, in hand. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, <laughs> I, you know, I watched it and I, at first, I was very cautious because I liked the trailer and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. I thought, God, I hope they, they like do it right uh, because they, they were very kind of like, oh, nothing's changed. Just like, you know, we reanimated it. And I'm like, okay. And I play the theme song, just the opening theme song. I'm like, oh, they really kept it very similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yep, Was that's that all it? I got. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep it short. Love yeah. it. <laughs> Every time now I think about when I watch Animaniacs, I think of you. There we that's go. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Good. I now go get it. some rest, you son of a bitch. Go I get will. Rest. I will, oh, Dad. Take Drink it easy. Drink water. All right. Yep. I love you. Oh, and don't tell your 15-year-old kid to watch that movie, for God's sake. All right. <laughs> <laughs> or nephew, rather. Smithy! Hey, oh. what's up, people? He's got a goon you- hat on for you, Roka. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I he heard does. you talking about a particular film. And I figured I should come on and, and defend my favorite movie. <laughs> but anyway, how's it going, Wendy? Good to meet you. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing so great. Great to meet you. And how are you? I'm great. I'm a huge Ahsoka fan, so I love watching you guys talk about Ahsoka. Thank but you. I also had a question. Since okay. you have such excellent taste in characters, which is, <laughs> who is your favorite Goonie? Oh. Uh-oh. Um, it's a, it's a good question. question. That's There's many idea. options, so. Oh, I gotta pick. I gotta pick right. Mm. Does, does one eyed Willie count? That's my favorite Goonie because he's, he, he, <laughs> he's dead. Because he's dead, can't bother you anymore. <laughs> uh, probably Data. Data. Oh. Data. Just so fun to watch. He's got uh, invention for every situation, so I totally yeah. agree with you. Data is one of the most handy Goonies there is. Right. Yeah. Right. What about you? I don't know. I'm kind of tied between chunk and mouth, you know, because mm. both of them have nonstop, you know, mouth is running. I don't know why they yeah. don't just call it chunk mouth, but anyway, <laughs> but also uh, I might actually be uh, capable of doing the truffle shuffle. I, I think oh. I can pull that off. So, you know, hey. <laughs> the, with my mouth COVID-19, I'll tell you this with my COVID-19, Wendy, I can pull that off right now. My little, my, my, my gut over here. I can do it for sure. Uh, <laughs> I just understood what you were saying. I was like, I don't understand COVID. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Uh, so, Wendy, do you watch the Clone Wars? Are you a fan of the Clone Wars and Rebels and everything? Yep. 
So we own the the whatever's on DVD, with the exception of the last season. Hmm. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Because eventually they stopped releasing them on DVD, and they were just streaming. I think. But anyway. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what's one of your favorite Ahsoka moments from the Clone Wars uh, show? Definitely when, uh, you know, leading up from when Barris betrayed or when she was basically betrayed by the entire Jedi Council. And yeah. I thought it was really powerful that she chose to walk away. Yeah. Uh, something I didn't see that she would do. And I was also heartbroken because I was like, wait, is she coming back? Are we going to see more of Ahsoka? What's going on? Is she leaving? Um, that episode is my favorite. And the, um, I think it was like the daughter, the son, and the father. Mm, that entire right. like three episode arc was yeah. fantastic. Oh, do you mean the Mortis? Yeah, the yeah. Mortis episode. Oh, right. That's excellent. Yeah. 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 That's when Word. I thought ah Ahsoka was going to kick it. I was like, oh, he's going to have to kill her. Yeah. This, is, this, this is it. This is why he doesn't talk about his apprentice ever. Well, yeah, because everyone thought she was going to die. And they found right. a really smart way to write her uh, into another kind of adventure so she could yeah. get away and avoid, uh, what do they call that? Uh, Order 66, is Order that right? 60. Order 66. Order 66. Yeah. I really <laughs> love the sequence where she's like running away from the, uh, you know, where she has to escape through the dark and it's raining and oh, she's yeah. doing all kinds of flipping and cool action. Anyway. Yeah. She's so cool. Love but her. Ahsoka <laughs> is awesome. Would you put her above Leia? My co-host on the Geek Buddies, Mike Vogel, put oh, her above Leia. I can't put her above Leia. I don't know if I can. I, I love she, She's my favorite, but I don't know if I can put her above Leia. Yeah. Like Leia's Leia kind of on another level. Leia doesn't do acrobatic time. things, but she's still like one of the greatest characters in Star Wars. So exactly. I agree with that. Yeah. Exactly. There mm -hmm. you go. All right. Anything else from either? Are you good? Just don't forget that Sloth from Goonies was played by John... Oh, what's his name? McCusack? Matusak? Who oh, was Matusak, one of the Raiders. Right. That's right. So the you, can, you can enjoy that character and, and have a great <laughs> football reference to go on. You know, That's throw that out on game time this week or something. Yeah, I, I will we'll absolutely more. next week. We'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Smithy. Great, great to see you. Always. You, Wendy, and excellent great to, to meet see you. you again, Roca. Thank you, sir. I'll see you soon. Much love to him. I love Alan Smith when he comes in here. We got one more waiting to talk to us live here, Wendy. Yeah. C3, C3P Diddy. Uh, a lot of nice. a lot of movement going on there. What's up, dude? Hi. Hey, Roka. How you doing? Hi, hi Wendy. How you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Roka, it's awesome to see you again. Um, you too, brother. So do you want a question that's going to piss you guys off? Do you want a question <laughs> where you've done... <laughs> I got to get that out of the way. Oh, one that uh, right. actually you and Matt have talked about or one that's like just a common question, movie question. Tell you what, start with a common one. And if we answer quickly, we'll go to the pissed off one. So go ahead. <laughs> okay, sounds I good. I love a challenge. So, uh, I love a challenge. Yeah. You do love a challenge. <laughs> you both are going to hate the one that uh, it's. Okay. Anyways, so uh, I'm starting a podcast. And um, oh, uh, a seg uh, thank you. A uh, segment that my fiance and I are, are both going to be on is called um, the the fart of balance. Basically, we're going to take two movies, one that either one of us have known and then one that we don't know and uh, put um, them together. So the one that, that we, neither of us ha have ever watched was Prisoners. Oh, with, yeah. Uh, Good Hugh film. Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal. So I took Good. another movie that starred Jake Gyll uh, excuse me, that starred Hugh Jackman and wanted to star somebody else. And that was The Prestige of Ooh. which one was going to be good. And I forget his name. Dennis, he directed Arrival. Dennis, yeah, Denis um, Villeneuve. Oh, Denis Villeneuve. 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 Wow, yeah. holy shit, I was off. Um, Denis Villeneuve. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought Prestige still holds up. I still think mm. it goes above The Dark Knight Rises because you need to watch Batman Begins to get The Dark Knight Rises. But right. The Prestige by itself is so good. I mean, it's so it's kind of like Pulp Fiction. It's so pulled apart mm -hmm. and put back together at the end to where it's so damn beautiful. Yeah. Um, so out of those two, which, which one did you guys like right now? Which one are you going to put in the DVD? I'm sorry. Yeah. 4K. Prestige. <laughs> what was the other Matt Magician movie that oh, came out? Illusion. Movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not like the that. one I'm thinking of. Yeah. No, yeah. No. Okay. I would pick the Prestige to put in my my DVD. Yeah, I would take there. Prestige over Prisoners. As much as I enjoyed Denis Villeneuve in that uh, Denis Villeneuve, what he does with that movie, uh, mm -hmm. I would still put in Prestige because there's a certain level of genius to Prestige that I thoroughly enjoy watching it and it's nice to see jackman and bale play a little lower class it's nice to see them play yeah. a little, you know what i'm saying a little more grittier portrayals both desperate men to achieve a certain status here or achieve, or win this uh life and death competition with their magic 
versus Prisoners, mm -hmm. which is more of a harder edge, grittier film that requires a lot of your emotion that can mm -hmm. mess you up. So I think that one's I watched like I would watch that maybe once every year, whereas Prestige, I could watch three or four times a year mm -hmm. uh, because it's a more it's a slightly more enjoyable film. Yes. And someone right. told me to go watch. Somebody go. Somebody said to go watch Uncut Gems. You're gonna have an anxiety attack. I'm oh my to, god! I'm about, to, oh. I'm about to. I'm about to have a kid. I watched that, and I was yeah. like, Oh yeah. This little asshole's gonna be chained to me his entire <laughs> life. <laughs> get, the, get the leash. Get the backpack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my, my girlfriend was 20 minutes in the movie. She goes, "Fuck that and fuck you. I'm out of here." And yeah. I, I was like, all right. <laughs> I'm gonna keep watching. I'm gonna keep watching. So, all right. That's, how do you piss us off? What's your question to piss us off? Go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I gotta start by saying, Roka, Make you're it my hero. Respectful. You're, you're my hero. I love you. I, I I I can't wait for the day to where you have a a head a foot on Jeff Snyder's head with both your belts back <laughs> and going now now call now say it, bitch. I can't wait for that wow. day. I love you. I respect you. Yeah. That being said, uh -oh. I it's hate got, no, this wait. movie. Oh! <laughs> I hate oh, this no. movie so much the first wow. time i watched it i was i was so blitzed off my ass when i saw this in the movie theaters i'm going wow great and then i watched it again sober and i was going maybe it needs weed because <laughs> wow. I, I i just i don't Tough like it, well because i think in the first i'll just talk about the first scene the first scene okay. you make her young and I'm assuming they're going to go with the New 52 route that Zeus and I forget her mother's name. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how they made her. Hippolyta. Not from, not, Hippolyta. Right. Thank you, sir. Not from the clay, not, not the original uh, origin. That being said, if you're going to make her young, why not make her, why not get an actress that's a, that's a little bit uh, mature around, I don't know, 15 and make her 15, make her 19. I don't give a shit, but like, right. why make her nine at, at, at the beginning? Because the way that that little nine-year-old girl is, is kind of like portraying, well, I want power. I, I want more adventure. What nine-year-old really says that? I think a teenager would make that presence way more of like, what's out there? Kind of like Hercules. When he is 18, he's like, what else is out there for me? And so you're invested that way. This way, I just wasn't, it wasn't grabbing me. So maybe that was like my second, first impression of it. Huh? You know what I mean? So maybe, hey. maybe that's what really, and plus I just hate Gal Gadot's face when, Wow. When, she, when she's being like Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman is empowerment. Wonder Woman is the female Superman, my favorite superhero of all time. She she is she is badass. It, like in Justice video games or any of these uh, in uh, oh, animated she's dirty in Injustice. Yeah, yeah. She, but but yeah. you know what she stands for. I can't yeah. really tell what she stands for in this movie other than just let's do the right thing. It's just yeah. like it's kind of one dimensional. But I mm -hmm. see why people like it. I mm -hmm. see why people like it. It's just, it's, I guess it's just not for me. Okay. That's fair. And that's, I think that what you said in that last statement is, is actually the truth. If it's not for you, it's not for you. And guess what? That's okay. It's not going to piss off Wendy and I, because like, it's just, I said this from the beginning, since I walked in this business, film is a subjective medium. Too many people agree on, too many people want to battle over an absolute thing. Film, mm -hmm. there is no absolutes with film. There are just majority opinions that push a film to a certain level Wonder mm -hmm. Woman made what almost a billion dollars, like eight seven hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah. Pretty incredible. Close, Nobody close. expected that. Nobody expected. Mm -hmm. I, get, I bet if it came out now, it would make a billion. Especially with Captain Marvel making a billion. So there's Easily. no way Wonder Woman doesn't. Which is why Wonder Woman two going to stream with Wonder Woman eighty four going to is a sh surprise. And we'll see mm -hmm. how much of that money they recoup. But like that is thing. So if you didn't like it, it didn't speak to you. You're not the only one. I've heard from a number of people who don't like that movie, and I've heard from a number of people, more people who actually love the movie and mm -hmm. were surprised right. about how good it is. So it, you're not alone in that camp. So don't don't sweat it. Uh, I mean, we like Greatest Showman. At least our experience. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is me. Well this said. is me. Is one of the best. This is me. One of the best songs in movies ever. But Agreed. all right, guys. Thank you very okay. much. My time Wait, is don't up. Don't go. Don't go. Would you watch the second Wonder Woman? Would you watch Wonder Woman? Hundred percent. Okay. thousand percent i i give i give every movie like the the first chance because it, it's like a book you can't judge a book by its cover you can't judge a movie by its trailer yeah mm -hmm. perfect example okay. is batman versus superman i thought that right. was gonna be great yep great trailer <laughs> great trailer Not best thing that's a best the that best thing dc ever came out with except for man of steel yep oh, oh there's it where's our oh, second one where is it <laughs> yeah we need that man of steel oh, too. oh yes yes yeah absolutely all right, well, good luck on your podcast, dude. Let us know yeah. how it goes. Keep checking in, all right?
Yes, sir. Thank much you, love, guys. Man. Bye-bye. Good luck on the, with the baby, too, coming. Much love. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Right. Oh, sorry. There he goes. A baby. Uh, all right. says, a baby. A baby. Um, all right, Wendy, let's uh, figure this out. We have no more stream labs, no more super chats that have come in. We do have one more person waiting live. Do you mind if we grab them real quick and then go we'll go? Go for it. Yeah, yeah right. go for it. One fix is impulse. What's up, dude? How I'm are here. you? I'm here for you. <laughs> What's Hello. going on, guys? Hi. So I'm in, um, I'm actually winding home my bike and a dog right now. Okay. Oh, wow. Be careful. Yeah, no yeah. shit. Go home from work. So um, I watched Last Mandalorian. Okay. I love it. But the thing is, I don't want a Jedi to meet uh, the baby. I want a Sith to meet the baby instead. Plot trust. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. How do you feel about that? Which Sith would you want to meet Grogu? Yeah. Good question. But who's left? That's the thing. Who's left? Uh, I don't. I don't oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thrawn. Thrawn. I mean, look, there's something weird about Ahsoka saying, tell me where your master is. I've only ever seen the master thing connected to a Sith Lord teaching uh, the person, uh, an apprentice, or mm -hmm. the Jedi teaching their Padawan. So to me, that's what a master implies. Now, we've never known Thrawn to have f force impulses or use force powers from what I've seen in Rebels. So mm -hmm. is this something that he has used in the past? Is this a Leia situation where he's just been sitting on those powers and is only going to use them in a desperate moment? Uh, and so therefore is actually training people that actually has people underneath him is that I don't know. But I mean, mentioning Thrawn kind of leads me into that possibility for uh, for Grogu. We shall see. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to look at like us or somebody on the dark side, Coming yeah. to to hone in. If you want to, oh God, I already hate this theory, but I'm going to say it out loud anyways. <laughs> I hate this theory in my head, but because of what we saw in episode four of like the clone that looks like Snoke, maybe. Right. Um, I I wonder if they'll mention Sidious at all. Oh, good point. Yeah. Like yeah, that. Yeah. I like. I don't. I don't love that. As I'm saying it, I don't love it at all. But. Hmm. Mm, possible, I guess. So, someone says Tushka says City Sidious is hanging out in an exhaust shaft somewhere. LOL. So yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. So, very good point. Um, why do you want to see a Sith Lord uh 156? Because I'm a huge fan of the Sith. And also I feel like 79 didn't know as much as a Sith. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I just I'm a huge fan. That's you, I'm yeah, you can be a fan of the Sith when you're young. When you get older and you see the real repercussions of being oh, a Sith bad. Lord, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think honestly, John, is it because the kid side of me wants to say because after yeah. watching 789 and seeing Kylo win, it's not I don't know. It's just in my mind I thought Kylo would be like the real like Sith, but then again I found reward. I don't know. It's just yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, but again, I do believe in uh, Filoni and Favo, so something's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm yeah. also a huge fan of Thrawn. Oh my god, I wrote the book. Oh yeah. Oh my god, I'm a huge yeah. fan of Thrawn. And also, I got to, I got to finish that alliances. I have it up there, sitting up there. Real good. I read the uh, book of Thrawn back when I was like younger too. Uh, yeah. So I'm very. When I said his name, I lost my mind. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and my, and also my cousin, huge fan of Soka. He told yeah. me he was crying the whole time, like. Wow. I was, I was crying too because when he mentioned Yoda and the theme, I was like, oh, oh yeah. Yep, that was rough. I did it. Agreed. They also mentioned Anakin. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, oh, that think, was the moment. Do you think if they make an Ahsoka series mm -hmm. where they have Ahsoka meet Anakin as a go, uh, Force Ghost with Hayden Christensen? Mm. Oh, that gave me chills. Mm. Talk you know, if, if yeah. they bring in Luke somehow into this. Uh, this series so you know how people are speculating that luke will be the one that will come and seek out uh grogu when they get to the temple and if luke and ahsoka ever met imagine the conversation that they would have she can be like yeah. hey like i knew your mom and your dad and obi-wan she was literally like one of the last she's the last existing person to have known them i'm a song to a friend of mine who was like does she know about him i mean he's famous does she know about luke <laughs> <laughs> at that point, at that point, you would think maybe, right? Yeah, yeah I would think so, right? Of course. Uh, so, and the fact that she's, uh, the fact that he's uh, Anakin's son, how yeah. you know what I'm saying? That you've got to know about that. So, and yeah. Leia too, probably. Yeah, yeah I would and she can, so. and he can tell her like, hey, like he he died as a as Anakin and mm -hmm. not Vader. So, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So Oh, all right, 156. Thanks for stopping in, dude. Great to see you. Oh, by the way, John, mom's yeah. doing good, by the way. Oh, good. 
Good. Oh, I'm glad to see that. Uh, Wendy, my mom got a new kidney back in July, so she's <gasps> playing that June. Yeah. Oh, good. so good. Yeah, yeah June, uh, the damn virus. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Keep her away yeah. from that. And I hope your yeah. friend recovers yeah, from that, Thanksgiving. too. Thanksgiving. So, yeah. <laughs> good. 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 Well, so, uh, hoping for an even better Christmas, man. Much love to you, brother. Yeah, especially back in Jersey. It's crazy over here. Oh, yeah. I imagine mm -hmm. so. Be yeah. safe, dude. All right, thanks, Be man. Safe. Right. Good seeing you, man. Thanks for coming in. Uh, all right, Wendy. Oh, great. When, I, well, two hours <laughs> flew by, Wendy. We didn't get a chance I to know. get into Potter. We didn't get a chance to get into trade universal stories. So please, I'd love to have you back down the road if you're willing to come back and if you for had a sure. good time. Yeah, this was so much fun. I think the, I feel like you and I could talk for hours. That's true. It's so you know? true. Oh, I mean, we, I, I know we can because we have. <laughs> we have. <laughs> we have. <laughs> Uh, that's for sure. Oh, John Campbell, real quick, says, uh, Hi, guys. I seriously doubt Revan shows up in The Mandalorian. He lived in mm -hmm. Legends thousands of years before the events. Says, yeah, that's what we mentioned. So yeah, it, it would be, a, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't line up. You're absolutely right. Uh, but thanks, John, for that uh, clarification. Really appreciate that. Wendy, it's been a blast. Thank you so much. Um, where can people find you and ev pitch everything you got going on, please? Everything. Uh, start the clock. Uh, you can find me on the social medias on Twitter and Instagram. It's just my name down. Nope. Down here at Wendy Lee Zaney trying to get to a 10 K uh, on Instagram. I'm like nice. 600 or so, maybe a little more like 650 away. So like trying to get a little push on Instagram. If you want to follow me there, post a lot of like, you know, geeky mm -hmm. looks and things like that or dog stuff it's either geeky geeky fashion looks or dog stuff on my instagram twitter is by the same name you can find me on youtube at the movie couple channel um my husband and i stream every wednesday and saturday at 2 p.m pt we talk about the latest in pop culture news and movie news we do a lot of uh trailer reactions movie reviews tv show reviews and of course reactions to each episode of the mandalorian as they come out. And then if you want to watch people play Animal Crossing, you can find me on Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash Wendy Lee Zaney. There you go. That's all the stuff she's got going on. Wendy's all over the place and you won't find better content on, on the YouTube. She's so great at what she does. And Dustin's Thank fantastic you. as well being a part of it. Really, it's, it's my honor. And thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, Wendy, I'm going to drop you out now and spend a little bit more time with the people and then uh, rolling on. So please feel free to have a great rest of your night. Thanks again. I love Thank you. you. I love so you. I miss you. you. I miss Say you hi too. To your lady. I will. Say hi to Dustin for me too as well, please. I will. I'll talk to you soon. I'll text you later. Uh, that sounds good. Take care. Bye, everybody. All right, that was Wendy Lee. She was incredible to take two hours, over two hours, and hanging out with us. Uh, I'd let her go. She can get on with her night. But thank you all so much for being so positive and receptive and fun and playful tonight with Wendy and I. It's, it, it means a lot. Thanks for all your questions, all your stream labs, your super chats. All of that means a lot to, to me as we build the thing that we're building here on the channel. Don't forget, 25 Days of Christmas is happening. Uh, later tonight, I will be dropping the first episode. It is on Elf. Uh, just a quick 15 minute review or a 15 to 20 minute review or something like that, or a little bit under about a Christmas movie every day, just reliving some of the, my favorite parts of the movie, uh, some of the best parts of the movie, and maybe revisiting some that maybe don't hold up. We shall see all of that coming down here every day from the Outlaw Nation channel, one Christmas movie every day. It's a hell of an undertaking, but I want to do it in the, to honor the spirit of the season and also hopefully maybe put some smiles on your face or pick up your spirits as you're going through Christmas. Not an easy time for some people, a great time for others. So just wanted to put that out there for people to maybe have it as a place to go and kind of smile as they watch something. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. It's it's on Elf. Uh, so that'll be dropping uh, later on today, tonight. Okay. You all take care of yourselves. Be well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit a like on this video. And remember to leave a comment on the video as well. The more comments and the likes you leave, it elevates the visibility of this video, elevates the visibility of the channel. And uh, subscribing to the channel means so much as we start marching further and, and closer and closer to that 15,000 mark. I want to cross it as soon as possible. I, I can only do that with your help and you sharing this video on your social media as well and telling people about the content that's going on on the Outlaw Nation. Have, you know, There's something for everybody. you got movies, entertainment, sports, professional wrestling, politics. It's all here, your one-stop shop for all those things with some great 
intelligent, quality hosts talking about uh, what's going on in all those fields and getting people like you to come in and hang out with us and talk and ask us questions. So it means the world to me. You guys are awesome. Uh, and uh, to be well, You know, practice the social distancing, wear your mask, be safe, do all the things that you need to do in this world to be well and to be safe and to uh, enjoy this holiday season. All right, much love to you all. I'm taking off and I'm going to end this show as I end every show. Please remember, whatever you need to do to get through the next second, next minute, next hour, next day, next week, next month, next year, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do it. I want you to do it because I need you to be part of the nation. I need you around. The world needs you around. We, as a community in this world, need you around. So please do whatever you need to do. To, you know, uh, uh, meditate, take a walk, listen to music. Remember, a, watch a Christmas movie. Uh, listen to something that to kind of puts your smile on your face. Play a game. Watch some of my content. Whatever it is that gets you through some of the tough moments of your day or your week or your life, please do that because uh, I love having you around. I want you to stick around here on the Outlaw Nation. Okay, much love to you. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next week with another brand new episode of the Outlaw Nation show. I love you. Peace. Mm -hmm.